Good morning. Good morning. Can we ask the guests, our guests and resource persons to, to settle down? We're, we're about to commence this committee hearing. We'll, we're just awaiting the arrival of uh, Secretary Abisado and perhaps one more governor. Uh, we're, almost, we're almost complete. A minute and then we'll commence. Again, uh, good morning at this uh, committee hearing of the committee, Senate Committee on Local Government joined with the Committee on Finance is hereby called to order. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, the Vice Chairman of the Committee, the Honorable Senator Amy Marcos, as well as the Vice Chairman of the Committee on Public Order, Senator De La Rosa. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge our guests this morning. Uh, I think I'll start from this area. The Her Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of the Republic of Turkey, Artemis Summer, is it correct pronunciation? Uh, morning, thank you for being present. The Charge of the Affairs of the EU Delegation, Mr. Thomas Weir Singh. Good morning, sir. The Charge of the Affairs of the British Embassy, Mr. Al Alistair Toti. Welcome. The Minister, Depu Deputy Chief of Mission, Embassy of Japan, Minister Yasushi, Yasushi Yamamoto, together with the First Secretaries, Mr. Yosuke Tam Tamabayashi and Mr. Ryosuke Ikeda, the First Secretary, Ms. Akemi Koyo Koyano, and the Senior Representative from JICA, Mr. Yo Ebisawa. Good morning, sir. Konnichiwa. And I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Deputy Head of Mission of the Australian Embassy of the Philippine, in the Philippines, Mr. Richard Sison. Is that the correct pronunciation? Together with uh, Ms. Janet, Jennifer Benet, First Secretary, Political Section of the Australian Embassy in the Philippines. I'd like to acknowledge, likewise, the presence of Mr. Enrico Strampelli uh, of the European Union, together with Ms. Emily Mercado, Program Manager. Our governors here present, a governor supporter of the province of Sulu, uh, gov a governor uh, 
by Miriam Magundadato of the province of Maguindanao, and I see uh, Congressman Sinsuat of the 1st District of Maguindanao. I likewise acknowledge the presence of my good friend, Governor Bombit Adjong of uh, Lano del Sur. And uh, to his left is the newly minted Secretary of the Department of Budget and Management, Secretary Wendell Abisado. And then from the BARM, uh, representing, uh, unfortunately, the Chief Minister is not around, Chief Minister uh, al Haj Murad Ibrahim. We have the, his representatives, the, the Secretary of the BARMS, DILG, Attorney Sena, Sena Rimbo. Good morning, Good morning sir. And uh, Attorney Balindong, who, who is now, uh, I can't read your nameplate. Uh, your designation, the speaker. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. I'm sorry, uh, the speaker of the uh, the BTA. Uh, and then to his left is Secretary uh, Galvez of the OPAP, Deputy Sec uh, USEC, the USEC of OPAP, uh, David Diciano, uh, the representative from UMDP, Mr. Chetan Kumar, uh, DPWH Under Secretary. Sedain, and then uh, Asek Halusos of the DILG, DepEd, I can't read your name, uh, DepEd representative. Uh, can you show your name plate? I'm sorry, sir. Mateo, good morning. Because my list here is not current, the Civil Service uh, Commissioner, Assistant Commissioner Ronquillo, Civil Service of Bar of Civil Service. Central Officer in Manila, Central Office, uh, the Assistant Secretary of Min Minda, where is Secretary Piñol? On the way, uh, Asec Romeo Montenegro, from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Mr. Noel Chianella, from the Department of Energy, Assistant Secretary Ergisa, where is uh, Yusek uh, Pentebella? Okay, so other guests will be acknowledged accord accordingly. We have the entire, I think the entire LGU delegation from BRR, B BARM. Uh, could you rise to be acknowledged, mga mayors natin nasa likuran? Kayo ba nasa likuran? Ayun. Good morning and welcome to the Senate. I know you're, you will be attending a very important League of Municipalities conference later. Good morning, sir. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge the representative from the Royal Norwegian Embassy, uh, Mr. Nikki uh, Delphine. Are you here, sir? Yeah. And the mayor's present, Mayor uh, Halan, Mayor uh, Kyur, Kyurhan Berto, Mayor Alakdar Al Al Loong, Mayor uh, Abdul Razar, Mayor Mustafa Barin, Mayor Ben Muksan, Mayor Abdurraf Burahan, Mayor Astri Taib, uh, Mayor K Kishar Tan Sulu, Vice Mayor Anton Burahan, Vice Mayor Reping Pulan. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to uh, the Senate. Alam niyo po, this, uh, this, this, this hearing was triggered by a resolution filed by Senator Ralph Recto, the, Se the Senate President Pro Temp, uh, resolution number 30, directing the Senate Committee on Local Government to conduct an inquiry, inquiry in aid of legislation on the update on the implementation of Republic Act 11054 or the Bangsamoro Organic Law with the end in view of ensuring that the provisions of the law are satisfied and implemented. To, to uh, jumpstart this hearing, this, this will not really be a, an investigation that will uh, deal or dig with uh, some policies of the BARM, but this is more of a, an update hearing on, or as to where the BARM is going on, uh, where are we now, and how the national government, specifically the Senate, can be of assistance, especially in implementing Republic Act 11054. So we, this committee will consider this 
as a journey and there will be missteps along the way. There will be baby steps that we have to be acknowledged during this infancy stage and we recognize that there might be some mistakes for some, there might be some uh, uh, obstacles to hurdle, but this, uh, the purpose of this committee hearing is really to be a, the, the three of us and the, the rest of the members of the Senate to be of assistance in so far as making it sure that the baby steps are correct, in the right direction as we collectively journey to achieve the aims and purposes of Republic Act 11054 or the organic law for the Bangsamoro region in, in uh, Muslim Mindanao. Before we continue, I'd like to have uh, Senator, ladies first, mm -hmm. Senator Aimi Marcos, if you have an opening statement. Uh, Senator De La Rosa, sir, you have an opening statement. So in, in order of, uh, not priority, but in order of uh, to, to to make this committee hearing more uh, orderly, we'd like to start with uh, the bar minister, the minister for local government. If you have a presentation, the topics that would be covered, and I, I'll be, uh, it's not forewarning you, I'll be giving you a heads up, will be uh, relative to where we are, where we are now, how we are attempting to produce the legal promises emanating from your side in so far as the uh, requirements uh, relative to the releases of funds emanating from the local gov national government is concerned. Uh, the codes, for instance, uh, the required codes, administrative code, electoral code, though I, I, am, I, I was apprised that you have uh, issued, enacted a human rights code. Uh, we take note of that. So where are we now in so far as the implementation of the, of the Bangsamoro uh, organic law is concerned? You have your, the floor, uh, Attorney uh, Sena, Sena Ribo. Uh, is it correct or you can correct me? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, greetings of peace from the Bangsamoro. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Senator Talentino, uh, members of the committee, um, colleagues from the Bangsamoro government, uh, development partners from the international community. Before I proceed, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, and if you please, would I be allowed to introduce first the delegation from the regional government? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I must have missed some of the personalities present here. Thank, thank you, sir. The first is the uh, chief of staff of the Bangsamoro Islamic Armed Forces, and who is now the minister of the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources, and Energy, uh, the Honorable Abdurrahouf Makahua, sir. Second is a member of the Central Committee of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and uh, now the uh, Minister of Public Works, um, the Honorable Edward Guerra. And before finally proceeding to the brief presentation of the regional government, may we sincerely apologize in behalf of the Chief Minister al Hajj Murad Ibrahim, that he cannot be present personally as he just led the Project Tabang in Holo yesterday with the Honorable Governor Sakurtan. Uh, but he is sending us um, the delegation from the regional government. And if I may please allow the Speaker of the Parliament of the Bank Samoro to briefly make an opening statement. Thereafter, I will proceed to the brief presentation of the regional government, sir. Go ahead. Uh, we recognize uh, Speaker Balindong. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Chairman, esteemed uh, senators,
fellow pursuers of peace and development, Excellencies, uh, good morning, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First, let me extend our gratitude for having us this morning and hearing from us the milestones so far of the New Bank Samoro government, as well as the attendant vicissitudes we face. As you know, we are grateful for finally granting us the recognition. We have been patiently and painstakingly asking from the from our brethren fellow Filipinos from the very start as early as the coming of the first colonizers. Some may argue we were already given this recognition with the establishment of the first regional government. But you and I know the difference between what was then autonomous region for Muslim Mindanao or ARM and what is now the Bansamoro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao or BARM. Precisely it is this difference. A new setup, finally the right relational dynamic between the national and regional government that has been the cause of confusion, misunderstanding, and even, and I have to emphasize, unintended rudeness on the part of some officials in government in dealing with the Bank Samoro. This to us is part of the struggle and the mandate of the new Bank Samoro government that we shall always be cooperative and collaborative to any and all endeavors to pursue good governance and ultimately development. It is in this premise that I implore our good senators and all the leaders of this country to be more sympathetic to the Bank Samoro. The Bank Samoro government has been there for barely a year now. Again, without belaboring the newness or uniqueness of BARM, we are still adjusting to the new intergovernmental framework with the national government. Despite this, through the able leadership of our Chief Minister, al Haj Murad Ibrahim, we have been able to accomplish the following. The BTA Parliament have enacted 68 bills and resolutions that would include the organizational structure, the election of its officers, the crafting of our parliamentary rules, procedures and practices, and of course the transition plan mandated by the Bank Samoro Organic Law. Likewise, we have approved the creation of the uh, Bank Samoro Human Rights Commission as mentioned by the Honorable Chairman the Atter Attorney General's Office, the Bank Samoro Women's Commission, the Bank Samoro Youth Commission, as mentioned by the Minister of DILG, we have just launched the Project Tabang, uh, which uh, brought the Chief Minister to Hulu two days ago. Uh, to extend immediate health and educational assistance to BARM constituents. We have launched the 
Intergovernmental Relations Body, or IGR, to address issues of mutual concern to the BARM and the national government. We have likewise constituted the Philippine Congress Bangsamoro Parliament Forum for the purpose of cooperation and coordination of legislative initiatives. Of course, the Bangsamoro Socioeconomic Development Planning Board, the Office of the President, the Senate and the House of Representatives are regularly provided with official reports of our achievements as mandated by the BOL or Bangsamoro Organic Law. You might ask, what is the status of the other priority bills? The BOL mentions the Bangsamoro Administrative Code, the Bangsamoro Revenue Code, the Bangsamoro Civil Service Code, the Bangsamoro Educational Code, and the Bangsamoro Electoral Code. The BTA Parliament is awaiting the report of the technical working group assigned to prepare the drafts. Hopefully, your, your honors, the drafts of the administrative code and other codes will be completed and submitted to the parliament soonest for deliberation and approval. We expect to approve the administrative code this month, within this month, or early next month. We could have accomplished more. But as I have already mentioned, because we are as if starting again, and by we, I mean not only the BAM, but also, the, in fact, more importantly, as it is fundamentally about intergovernmental relations, the national government. I say this because if there has been a clear understanding of the nature of BARM as a regional government from the start, then we would not have to deal with so many differences or difficulties as it is now. BARM is not just a result of the government's peace negotiations with the more Islamic Liberation Front. BARM is the fulfillment of the key provision in the 1987 Constitution setting aside an autonomous regional government for Muslim Mindanao and the Cordillera. This is but one of the concretization of autonomy of the territorial and political subdivisions as a key principle embodied in our Constitution. This means that BAM is not just any local government. In fact, it is comprised of local government units within its territory, consistent with the Constitution's characterization of an autonomous region, consisting of provinces, municipalities, and geographical areas, sharing common and distinctive historical and cultural heritage, economic and social structures and other relevant characteristics. This is the very reason, Your Honours, why BAM has been endowed with powers beyond what any and all LGU has been given in Republic Act 11054 or the, or the BUL. It is granted self-governance the power to pursue its political, economic, social, and cultural development as provided for in this organic law. Evidently, some of these powers coincide with the functions of various national government agencies. This is why, as it is in other countries, where autonomous territories are created, there is a particular dynamic of rela relations with the national government that is always provided 
This is found in the whole article on intergovernmental relations in the BUL, Article 6. This is the reason why its total understanding is fundamental before any initiative is taken by the national government on and with BAM, not to overemphasize BAM, something that is entirely new. It is something that is entirely new in this country, overall political and administrative system. There are various intergovernmental mechanisms created by the BUL. Different councils, commissions, and boards created for specific purposes put in motion so that we don't get ourselves in delicate situations where it will only show how ill-prepared we are. More than anything, there has to be a sustained and effective effort to popularize what BARM is, especially its nature as a territory and political subdivision of the country, specifically for our government officials. In time, everyone will be properly informed and adequately tooled to work with BARM more effectively. The Senate will be most helpful in this regard. We are hopeful that as you have helped us in giving birth to our BARM, you will also join us in our pursuit for development. Together, we have no doubt the country will be far better off. Again, assalamu alaikum. Uh, Speaker Balindong, you forgot to mention uh, that the BTA also adopted Resolution 186, and I congratulate you for that. Uh, uh, and the tenor of the resolution is to adopt and implement measures to prevent the entry of coronavirus in the Bangzamoro region. Thank you for that. Very proactive and uh, very responsive to the needs of your constituents. Uh, uh, Bar Minister M M MLG, how long is your presentation? Uh, we'll, we'll try to do it in 10 minutes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so we've divided the presentation into four parts. One is the focus on institution building and strengthening the significant accomplishments of the regional government for a year, opportunities and challenges, and other important issues, just so that uh, a better context is provided, Mr. Chair. And you will provide this committee a copy of your presentation? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So if you can make it eight minutes, uh, the better. We'll, we'll try, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> so just thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning again. Just to provide the context, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao was created as um, as the legislation to implement the peace agreement signed between the government of the Philippines and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front after a 17-year negotiation between the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. On July 16, 2018, the President signed into law Republic Act 11054 or the Organic Law for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. On January 21, 2019, the conduct of plebiscite for the inclusion of the armed territory in the cities of Cotabato and Isabela, in which votes were all in all areas except for Isabela. On January 25, the Commission on Election declared that RA 11054 is ratified. Just for the information of the body, the votes garnered for the yes in the whole region was 1,540,000. 17. No votes was only 198,750. On February 6, 2019, the plebiscite for the inclusion of the six municipalities of Lano del Norte and the 67 barangays of North Cotabato were also conducted. In the province of Lano del Norte, the yes vote won in the six municipalities. Unfortunately, the whole of the province of Lano del Norte voted no. Of the 67 barangays in North Curabato, the yes vote won in 63, and the 63, therefore, are included as part of the Bangsamoro. 
On February 22, 2019, 75 out of the 80 members of the Bank Samara Transition Authority were appointed by the President. Uh, on February 26, 2019, a ceremonial turnover of the then Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao to the Bank Samara Autonomous Region was conducted. On 29 March 2019, no less than the President, President Rodrigo Roma Duterte, inaugurated the Bangsamoro Autonomous Regional Government. Thereafter, officers of the Parliament as well as the Wali were also appointed. The, what, is, what is important to understand is that the transition in the Bangsamoro is a complex one. It is not just a transition from ARMM to BARM, it is also a transition for the Moro Islamic Liberation Front from an armed revolutionary organization into governance. It is also a transition for us in defining a new relationship between the central government or the national government and that of the regional government. And, and therefore, what is important to remember in this transition is that we're not just changing people that are running the former autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, we are also into the business of building institutions and strengthening the institutions. In Article 16, Section 6 of the Organic Law, this one speaks of the transition uh, and the transition plan. Within the first 60 days of the transition period, the Interim Chief Minister shall submit to the Bank Samoa Transition Authority a transition plan that shall contain the proposed organizational plan as well as the schedule for implementation. Therefore, the Bank Samoa Transition Authority shall by majority vote of all its members approve or otherwise act on the transition plan within 10 days upon submission by the interim chief minister. The BTA or the Bank Samoa Transition Authority adopted a transition plan on 17 June 2019. The transition plan provided for the structure in details of the 15 ministries as well as the schedule for the gradual phase out of the ARM employees as provided by law. Uh, the, the gradual phasing out of employees was undertaken in three batches to ensure that there would still be continuity of service. The first batch were separated on October 31, 2019. The second batch were separated on November 30, 2019. The third batch was separated uh, December 31, 2019. We've adopted criteria and consideration for scheduling the gradual phase out of the ARMM bureaucracy. Some of these criteria were length of service, age of the concerned employee, uh, position, uh, meaning if it is a frontline position or it, these are essential positions, we propose that those employees be phased out last, and that is December 31, 2019 dependency or non-pendency of cases, and accountability. With respect to the separation, all separation incentives for batches 1 and 2 were already given to the separated employees. And for this, we wanted to thank the Secretary of um, Budget and Management for facilitating the release of the separation package for our employees. Uh, there are still pending uh, SARO for batch 3, and these are for the Office of the Regional Governor, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, the Department of Labor and Employment, the Department of Public Works and Highways, DOTC, or the Department of Transportation and Communications, and the Regional Legislative Assembly. What is important to note is that we've already submitted to the DBM on October 15, 2019, batch 1, and November 15, 2019, for batches 2 and 3. So what remains to be released by the DBM are essentially for batch 3, uh, the separation incentive. Uh, on institution building, we are currently uh, recruiting personnel into the bureaucracy. For this, we've launched a Bangsamoro Jobs Portal. Um, and that in this portal, all of the positions 
created by the regional government are posted and applicants are encouraged to apply through this portal. So they do not have to go to Cotabato City. As of today, uh, Mr. Chair, there are 281,671 applications for 3,662 positions. So you can just imagine the difficulty of processing the applications. But we're happy that this is the first time that we are becoming very, very transparent in the process of hiring in the regional government. Uh, parallel to the massive hiring process currently being done, accountable officers and other important employees of the ministries and offices were extended until March 31, 2020 to wrap up the accounts and reports of the respective offices and to continue the services of government in time for the placement of new employees in the bureaucracy. So we're being conscious of the fact that there are still reports to be made specifically to the Commission on Audit for transactions made in 2019. So accountable officers were extended up to March 31, 2021. The basis for this are the resolution of the Parliament extending the phase-out plan for accountable armed officials and employees as well as the Office of the Chief Minister's Memorandum Circular uh, to series of 2020. Um, on legislation, the priority legislations cover laws necessary in strengthening institutions and mechanisms, creating the essential offices of the farm and enacting laws required and mandated by the BOL. Uh, some of these priority legislations are the... Mr. Minister, can we have that flashed again, uh, the previous screen? I think I saw... So, uh, extended until March, March 31, 2020. 2020, thank sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. The priority legislations are the Bangsamoro Administrative Code, the Bangsamoro Revenue Code, the Bangsamoro Local Government Code, the Bangsamoro Education Code, and the Civil Service Commission, uh, Civil Service Code. The BTA may also enact Civil Service Code and law to recognize, protect, and promote, and preserve the rights of the indigenous people. The current status of these codes, Mr. Chair, is that all of these codes have been drafted at the level of the cabinet. Uh, as soon as the BTA convenes, then we will begin transmitting the draft codes to the parliament as a proposal of the government of the day. That means it will have the support of the majority of the members of the Bangsamoro Parliament. And therefore, Minister, it is assured that it will be passed. I catch you, when do you expect to have this enacted into laws? The, the codes drafted by, uh, for, for the civil service, uh, electoral code, administrative code, because certainly, as you... As you transition in uh, getting new applicants and uh, putting up a new bureaucracy, the Civil Service Commission is here, yes, sir. Uh, which laws would now apply? Is it the central government civil service rules or your soon-to-be-enacted uh, civil service regulations? So these are, these, are, uh, these are gaps probably that would, be, that would have to be addressed soonest because we need to have a civil service code uh, enacted soon. So my question is, ano yung timeline natin dito? When do we expect this to be uh, enacted, Mr. Minister? We will transmit it in the first quarter of this year, uh, and then the parliament will process it. What is important to note is that the consultation processes in all of the provinces for many of these codes have been undertaken, and, and therefore uh, the parliament may expedite the passage of this uh, code, sir. Go ahead. Uh, another, on, another eight more minutes, sir. Thank you, sir. On, on um, operationalization of the moral governance call of the chief minister, we're happy to report that as of date, the Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources, and Energy already collected a total of 306 million, uh, which is more than three times of the previous collections in the regional government. The average in the ARMM was 100 million for this. For this year, we've already collected 306 million, uh, Mr. Chair. 
and increase in the number of allergies for the sale of local governance. We're happy to report that from 23 compliant LGUs we produced last year, 28, making us the number one region in Mindanao in terms of SGLG compliance and overall number five in the country. Our, not, our regional average on SGLG passage is higher than the national average. On the uh, transparency measures being undertaken, we've expanded the Bangsamo Advanced Road Mapping and Management, or eBarn system, which is an online repository of MPWO barn projects, using geotagged photos for data validation of infrastructure projects in the region. We also launched on April 4, 2019, the full disclosure policy for the region, where we mandate the local government units to post their budget internal revenue allocation, a summary of the infrastructures being undertaken, and all other details that are important for people to understand how the internal revenue allotments are being utilized by local government units. We also set high investment record last year where the arm has registered an amount of 4.15 billion worth of investments um, and they recorded a total of 2,724 employments in 2019. The regional board of investments exceeded its target of generating 2.3 billion worth of investment by 180%. This is largely uh, because of the uh, peace and order now obtaining in the region as a result of the implementation of the organic law. I will skip the number of laws that has been enacted because the speaker already mentioned that. Uh, let me just proceed to some of the people-centric banner programs of the current government. As we were saying, Project Tabang or Tulong Allies of Bangsamorong Nangangailangan which is a project that brings together in a convergence all of the ministries led by the chief minister uh, to the different rural areas of the region. So yesterday, the chief minister and all of the ministers were actually in Homo to provide services to the constituents of the province of Sulu, or more specifically those who were victims of the fire last month in uh, the three barangays of Homo. Um, we are also uh, delivering services uh, through the Bangsamoro Ready or the Rapid Emergency Action on Disaster Incidents. We would want to highlight two things. One is that this team was the first to respond in the earthquakes in North Cotabato. So we were the first to reach uh, the province of North Cotabato to provide assistance to victims of the earthquake. We were also in Batangas to help our colleagues, uh, uh, our fellow Filipino citizens during the eruption of uh, Taal. I personally led the team in Batangas. Ambag or the Ayuda Medical Mula sa Bangsamoro Government is a medical program where patients may actually avail of free medical services and the government, uh, the regional government provides the payment for bills uh, incurred by the uh, patients in different hospitals in the region, uh, Cotabato City and some hospitals in the provinces of the region. Um, we also focus our attention on capacity building by institutionalizing partnership with different uh, government and international organizations such as the Development Academy of the Philippines, the Local Government Academy, Asian Institute of Management and the Department of Budget and Management. On intergovernmental relations body, uh, we've constituted all of our IGRBs uh, from the Intergovernmental Fiscal Policy Board, Intergovernmental Infrastructure Development Board, Intergovernmental Energy Board, Joint Body for the Zones of Joint Cooperation. All of this have been constituted. We're just awaiting for our counterparts from the national government to constitute their IGRs. On uh, February 6, 2019, we're also happy to announce that the 63 barangays of North Curabato were already turned over to us by the provincial government. 
Also, 11 non-ERA municipalities in the barn already received, as of March, their first internal revenue allocation as a result of the implementation of the BOL. What are the opportunities and challenges? Uh, we still have issues on the transfer of assets, offices of the national agency, which are situated in the territory of the Mangsamoro. Prominent among them are the national offices located in the city of Cotabato that voted yes during the plebiscite. Uh, we're also awaiting the national government to activate their IGRs uh, as enumerated. We're also having challenges on the release of Black Grant. In fact, the Black Grant was released to us only last February. And the process, uh, Mr. Chair, and this is what we want probably the Senate to help us in the national government, the process of the release has been very, very circuitous. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking Secretary Abisado to uh, explain that later on. But uh, I'd like first to acknowledge the, the arrival of Governor Nancy Katamko of Cotabato. Uh, ilang minutes pa, sir? Uh, because I'd like to have the European Union make a brief uh, statement because understand, uh, sir, you're about to leave in two minutes. One last slide, sir. One last slide. Uh, uh, on nationally funded programs, there are some major programs that are supposed to be uh, implemented in the Bank Samoro, which are no longer in the 2020 General Appropriations Act. Prominent among this is the SBP or the school building program for the region. So we want the Senate to look at the possibility of restoring SBP into the region. There are also program funds for 2019 which were never released to the regional government. We want these funds to be accessed by us so we can further implement uh, basic programs in the region. On normalization, as a commitment, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, they commissioned a total of 12,000 combatants after the passage of the organic law. Even as we speak, Mr. Chair, in Camp Darapanan, 333 combatants of the MLF are being decommissioned by the IDB or the independent decommissioning body. On transitional justice, there is uh, urgency to legislate the issue of transitional justice. On amnesty and pardon, many of our senior commanders, members of the Bank Samoro Parliament, still have pending warrants and cases. There has to be an amnesty proclamation, which the Congress would have to concur. On the decommissioning, our problem is that while we are recruiting civil servants, we have not delivered on the socio-economic package for our decommissioned combatants. This is becoming a problem because they feel that we are recruiting civilians and they are being left out in the, in the different camps. So I think we will have to hasten the delivery of socio-economic packages for our combatants. We have not yet also activated the provision of the organic law on the Bank Samoro participation in national government. And this pertains to appointments of Bank Samoro residents to specific offices in the national government, which is provided in the organic law. That is all, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Thank you very much and good morning. Uh, Mr. Minister, uh, perhaps we will be able to address some of the concerns as we go along, but I'd like to have the European Union uh, Charge the affair, make a statement because you're about to leave. We'll give you uh, how much time do you want? Uh, one minute? Two, uh, two minutes? Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. This is a, this is a statement in support or uh, a statement of concern? I think this is a statement in support. Uh, I'm sure of that. Chair, Senators, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is an honor for me to share with you a few updates on EU activities in support of the implementation of the Bang Zamoro Organic Law and the peace process in general. And thank you for having allowed me to skip the line of speakers. Over the past 25 years, the European Union has been one of the biggest foreign development partners to provide support to Mindanao and the peace process involving the Moro Islamic Liberation Front and the Moro National Liberation Front, and the government of the Philippines. We have been working in promoting peace, human security, and development, including in the most vulnerable and conflict-affected areas. 
The EU is pursuing a comprehensive approach supporting under different instruments, both the political settlement and the longer term development. The EU has also been a major humanitarian donor for the relief assistance to civilians affected by armed conflict, especially for displaced populations and during the Marawi crisis in 2017. Sum of 850,000 euro was provided to support economic security activities, especially in areas close to Marawi city. I will focus my intervention briefly on a few projects that we have in the pipeline that are basically ready to go, and I will leave aside presentation of the things that we have been doing over the when years. When you say basically ready to go, you're waiting for something? You're waiting for a something to trigger the implementation? Indeed. I will come to, I'll come to that. Um, uh, the ratification of the organic law for the Banzamoro Autonomous Region constitutes a major step. The EU is pleased to note the progress being made in the Bangsamoro peace process. However, the challenges are enormous given the limited time of transition. Challenges are the establishment of a completely new governance system consisting of a well-functioning assembly, a new form of government, as well as a restructured judicial system combining Sharia state and customary justices. The EU together with its counterparts in government as well as the BTA, over the last 12 months has prepared two important new programs. The first one is called Peace and Development in the BARM, PD BARM, and has a total cost of almost 25 million euro. The second one is called Zubatra and is designed to address important needs during the transition period and beyond. The total amount uh, of the EU contribution is also 25 million euro. So together, these uh, two programs uh, have a cost of roughly 50 million euro or 2.8 billion peso. The two financing agreements which will implement the two programs are ready and are currently with the Department of Finance for its counter signature before they can begin. I could say a few more words on these programs, but I can skip that and, and focus on the last one, which is still under preparation. Uh, that is a program which is, as I said, under preparation and should be ready by the end of this year. It is the Banga, Banga Moro Agri Enterprise Program with an EU contribution of 20 million euro, which will contribute to the improvement of the BARM agri business sector to the promotion of investment in the sector. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Sir, uh, Senator Marcos would like to ask a, a question. Yes, uh, Sharjay uh, Bursing, um, may I know if you've sorted out the clearance process with the DFA as well as the AFP, which seemed to be a bone of contention with the EU donations previously? Well, the short answer is yes. The EU as an organization has had never been uh, directly affected by uh, the memorandum on the suspension of assistance, which you know has been lifted recently in any case. Uh, yes, we have, been, uh, we have carried out extensive consultations uh, with all stakeholders. I see uh, Secretary Galvez uh, uh, nodding. Uh, it, is, is, it is just the last step in the process, it is a very normal process. At the end, these things have to, the financing agreements for these programs have to be submitted to the Department of Finance, and that always takes a bit of time, internal consultations, and we hope this can go ahead very soon. Yes, I'm relieved to uh, hear that, given that last year there were a number of uh, tweets that didn't seem to be very... Uh, um, uh, clear about the process and that there was certain dispute that uh, both the DFA and the AFP were being bypassed. If I may add, uh, as a follow-up, last week the President through Executive Secretary Mergel Dea already lifted the suspension. So would that mean that, that the entire European Union community would now be focusing again its attention towards uh, 
helping the BARM uh, area government? Is that, is that the uh, appropriate con consequence of this lifting? Well, uh, I mean, I can speak first of all for the European Union as an organization. We have member states who carry out projects. Uh, it is true that uh, uh, some uh, of them, them had been blocked for a while. Uh, but as you said, uh, the suspension now has been lifted and there is nothing to prevent them from going ahead. Over full steam ahead. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, can you leave us a copy of your presentation? Thank you. We'd like to have, uh, with the permission of my colleagues, we'd like to have uh, uh, Secretary of the DBM uh, address some concerns or probably have a short presentation and then questions will be emanating from my colleague Senators Marcos and De La Rosa. Sir, ang tanong lang dito kanina, nakadating na ba talaga yung inaasahan comprehensive uh, grants that would be under the law that should have been given uh, to the BARM on time? Uh, is there a, a, a time frame for the releases of all of this? Ano po yung mga dapat asahan pa? sa mga darating na buwan at panahon para masigurado natin na yung nilalaman po ng, ng organic law ay matupad. Uh, Secretary Abisado, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, Your Honors. Uh, for informing the committee of the status of releases of the 20 or fiscal year 2020 BARM budget I'd like to inform the community that the BAM annual block grant, grant amounting to 63,634,076,000 pesos have been completely released to the BARM. And let me tell you that uh, on January 29 of this year, under SARO number LGRCB uh, 20.00081 and NCA number LGRCB 20.00152. Anyway, we will furnish you. Dated January 2020 was released for the first quarter of this year. Following that, on February 13 this year, we issued another set of SARO and NCA amounting to 47 billion seven hundred twenty-five million five hundred fifty-seven thousand, all totaling sixty-three billion six hundred thirty-four million seventy-six, which is the total annual block grant. The uh, funds, however, uh, is not within the control of DBM. It is with the Bureau of Treasury. They are the ones releasing or transferring the funds to the account of the BARM. Maybe there are uh, some reason for the delay. We will not be in a position uh, to explain that. But insofar as DBM is concerned, as provided for in the GAA, we have already released the entire annual block grant for BARM for this year. There are two other items that also have to be released to BARM, and that is their share from the Special Development Fund of $5 billion and shares in taxes, fees, and charges in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. The release of the Special Development Fund is subject to the submission of the Bangsamoro Development Plan. And on the shares and taxes, fees, and charges, this will have to wait up until the time the DOF tells us that there's an excess in the uh, uh, taxes, uh, fees, and charges uh, collected that can now really be released already also to BARM in line with this uh, provision and the GAA. So all in all totaling 70,634,076,000, which is the entirety 
of uh, the uh, grant given to Barn for this year, uh, which is 63 uh, uh, billion 634 million 76 for the annual black, black grant, special development fund of 5 billion, and shares and taxes, fees and charges of 2 billion. Uh, Mr. Chair, your honors. Uh, Secretary Abisado, uh, Senator Marcos or Senator De La Rosa, are, are there questions? Uh, yes, if there's anyone here from the barn, what's the actual situation on the ground? What do you have in your tail? What? Thank you, Madam Senator. What we have in the regional treasuries account is 10.6 billion. That's the actual money uh, transferred to the regional government's treasury. The process also, as we were saying, is circuitous because from the national treasury, it goes to the Bureau of Treasury in Region 12. From Region 12, which is outside the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, it goes into the Bureau of Treasury in the province of Maguindanao before it reaches the regional government. Just to remind the, the committee that in organic law, the important qualifiers in the release of the black rat is that it is direct, it is comprehensive, and it is without lien. So what we understand as direct should be from the national treasury goes to the regional treasury, and it is not, in our opinion, supposed to pass through Region 12 and the provincial BOTR in Maguindanao. Secretary Abisado, uh, with the indulgence uh, of Senator Marcos, can we have a, a response relative to that? Mr. Chairman, Your Honors, uh, the delay could be attributed to the system at the Department of Finance, particularly at the Bureau of Treasury, and that the, uh, the um, release, we still have to pass through the regional Bureau of Treasury office, which is not located in Barn, but rather under Region 12. So that is something that I think DOF uh, can address and uh, make sure that they're able to facilitate the, the release as fast as they can from their level. But from our level, sir, uh, we have done uh, what is incumbent uh, of us, and as required, we have complied with the provision of the GA. Secretary Abisado. Yes, Your uh, Honor. Ang sabi kasi, may mga saro na, pero hindi pa daw kompleto yung NCA? Hindi po, sabay po yan. Magkasabay ninyo rin. Opo, opo. Pag-issue namin ng saro, may kaakibat na NCA. Kasi Tapos, ang release po yan, direkta sa, sa BTR. Po. Kasi sabi ng iba sa National Treasury, Yung iba daw, incomplete daw yung documents kasi yung NCA hindi daw nakakabit doon sa SARO. Tama po ba yun? Hindi po. Araw-araw uh, po pinipick up sa, sa office namin yung SARO at uh, NCA ng mismong Bureau of Treasury po. po. Kasi alam ko talaga yan ang order ngayon na talagang tuloy-tuloy at uh, mabilis, kompleto para wala nang hadlang. Um, subalit uh, sa palagay ninyo, uh, saan nangyayari yung uh, delay? Sinabi na ninyo kanina yung National Treasury po. Uh, bakit kaya nangyayari ito? Uh, ganito kasi po, uh, the Bureau of Treasury also has to program the release because daily we collect our taxes. Eh. So hindi mo po pwede yung buo ka agad ma-release. Habang nangungolekta tayo, nililikom ng BTR, Pagdating ng pasok ng buwan, ide-deposit nila yon. So yun lang naman po ang, ang I think patakaran din ng BTR kasi kinukolekta pa nga natin yung, yung pera. Po. Po, sigurado na kinukolekta natin pero alam natin kung kailan darating yung next 10 billion, yung susunod na 10 billion po. para ma-program rin ng bar. BARM ang susunod kasi ang dami-dami lang listahan ng gawain. Kumbaga yung homework nila sa katutak. Pero talaga ba darating yung pera, yung katanungan? Opo ma'am. Uh, required po yan pero under the law. Po, ano, yung, ano yung schedule uh, para ang, naasahan ang, po? Monthly po ang release ng, uh, ng funds. Ng transfer ng funds monthly po. Monthly. Attorney Sinarimbo, um, uh, uh, similar po ito sa ira ng lahat ng LGUs. 
nandito po ang mga governors natin, they know that even as uh, it is automatically appropriated in the GAA, the release of uh, the share of the ERA is done monthly po by the Bureau of Treasury po. Tama po, matagal akong governor, Apo. kaya alam ko yung uh, dinadanas ni na Governor Adjong at si Marian. Subalit yun nga, sa bar, palibasa bago, talaga bang buwan-buwan ninyo natatanggap ang uh, mga uh, pondong ito? Attorney Sinarimbo, please. Thank you, Madam Senator. For this year po, mayroong delay. Uh, and, and this one, I think, is being sorted out between DPM and the Department of Finance. So, we received the first tranche only uh, February uh, 13th. Uh, and that's credited into the regional treasuries account. Uh, and then yung sumunod naman po the buwan. So, uh, we are still awaiting yung uh, mga susunod na releases. So, it's being credited every 10th day except in the first tranche na merong delay uh, dahil instead na January po, February na po na-release. So, ang uh, 10.6 billion na nasa sa inyo na ngayon, February and March yon dalawang tranche po ba yon Ah, sorry, January pero experiencing delay and then February, 10th day of every month, ina-expect na po ninyo. Okay. Ma'am, Kasi yes, sa sekretaryo. Uh, Pag-open po kasi din ng account ng BARM, January na po eh. Kaya hindi mo kaagad ma, ma, ano, ma anticipate na as early as you can. So, naging pwede po kasi kami ng, ano, ng account nila number kasi magbubukas po sila. Hindi na po kasi nila pwedeng gamitin yung old uh, account ng ARMM din. Opo. O, siyempre, completely understandable po kasi may birthing pains tayo, nagka-delay-delay sa mga detalye. At uh, sana tuloy-tuloy nga. So, inaasahan ninyo na 10th day of every month, darating na po ito. Okay. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Matanong ko lang si uh, Minister sa, hindi ko pa rin ma-pronounce yung uh, Minister Vago. Nag-meet sa Davao yung Intergovernmental Fiscal Policy Board uh, nandun si Secretary Dominguez. So lahat po siguro ng issues na nire-raise nyo ngayon, yung pagdaan sa Region 12, uh, sa Bureau of Treasury, yung content delay, na-raise na po yan doon. At siguro naman po natugunan na yan ni uh, Secretary of Finance uh, Dominguez. Hindi pa po nare-raise doon sa Jan uh, December 16, 2019 na uh, meeting ng intergovernmental relations body, yung lahat ng issues. And in particular, itong releases, dahil yung pong agenda in the IGRB is agreed between the parties. Uh, hindi ho kasali yung uh, releases doon sa agenda na yun. Dalawa lang po yung major items doon. One was yung issue ng transfer ng offices na nasa Cotabato City, in particular yung Department of Education sa Cotabato at saka sa North Cotabato, 63 barangays. Pangalawa pong issue ay yung issue po ng um, schedule ng mga susunod na meeting at saka yung pong uh, uh, launching formal ng IGRB. So, hindi pa po lahat ng issues ay na-raise sa IGRB. I'm sure uh, sa next setting ninyo, you, you will raise that kasi mga importanteng ano to eh, uh, mga importanteng uh, topics na dapat ma-resolve kagad. Secretary Galvez, uh, you're raising your hand. Sir Chairman, sir, uh, your own Lord. Uh, sir, uh, pertaining sir, sa GRB, we will be having a meeting this coming March 20, and maybe we will uh, make it uh, sure that uh, we will tackle this issue, considering this is a very important issue. And then on the the question that uh, pertaining the organization of GRB, the Intergovernmental Fiscal Policy Board has been meeting uh, regularly. Actually, sir, itong pinaka uh, ano po, active po, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, the Secretary of Finance, we would like to commend him because uh, he's the one really pursuing for the, you know, for the capacitation of the barn in terms of financial management. And also, there, there are already an uh, informal meeting between the joint body for the zone of joint cooperations under DA and also uh, the Intergovernmental Infrastructure Development Board, wherein uh, USEX and DIN is here, uh, they are regularly meeting with, the, with their counterpart. What we have um, uh, here is uh, 
yung Pangsamoro Sustainable Development Board, I believe the parliament should, ano, should, create, should create a counterpart of the NEDA, considering that uh, the Pangsamoro Sustainable Development Board uh, ay kailangan po talaga ng, ano, ng, ng batas ng parliament para magkaroon po ng, ano, ng uh, bumuo po ng counterpart ng regional NEDA. And then, ang uh, nakikita po namin sa intergovernmental body, ang kailangan po na talagang uh, i-organize ay ito pong uh, Philippine Congress Bang Samoro Parliament Forum which is uh, ito po ay kasama po ang Senate at saka po kong yung Congress. And uh, we will uh, we will make sure sir na this coming uh, uh, March 20 all of these uh, seven uh, intergovernmental uh, committees and bodies will be or organized including the the Council of Leaders. I already uh, talked with uh, the Chief Minister and he is uh, informing me that the Council of Leaders will be formally launched on the uh, March 28th uh, during uh, the near anniversary of the inauguration of the farm. Thank you. Senator Marcos. Secretary Abdisado, yung uh, bago nagkaroon ng block grant, magkano ang naibigay sa BARM nung nakaraang taon? Ang 2019 po, ang kabuuan na ibigay sa BARM Nasa ano ko? Nasa ano? 2019. I just want to be sure with my figures. Uh, ito ba? Last year po, ang kabuuan na i-release sa BARM ay 32,267,000,000. Pesos. Po. This is only 2019 po. There were Apo. no uh, previous amounts uh, released. Ito lang talaga. For BARM po, specifically. For BARM specifically. Apo. Oo, kasi itong 32 billion, ito ba yung mga sweldo na hinabol na lamang sa contingency fund ng OP at saka yung mga savings ng DBM o iba pa po to. Kasi naalala ko na hindi nasweldohan yung mga empleyado, apat na buwan, pati yung pagbabiyahe sa Cotabato, out of pocket sila. Um, kaya lang po to, at dito ba yung uh, tinutukoy nila? Opo, ito yung series of releases po na umabot ng 32.2 uh, billion at ito po sakup na lahat ang mga pangangailangan ng BARM, pati po yung uh, pambayad nila ng uh, retirement benefits, uh, pati yung MOO nila, uh, personal services. And um, there was I, uh, there was another amount that... Uh, Kasi ang pagkaalala ko, walang item dun sa GAA. Kaya uh, ginawa nila ng paraan ni Presidente doon sa kanyang uh, contingency fund plus yung DBM kung ano man yung mga mm -hmm. savings mm -hmm. na malikom Apo. ito na lang yung binigay ito ba itong 32 billion po hindi po meron pong iba pa na na-release namin uh, ito yung sa unprogram fund mm -hmm. pero part pa rin ng 32 billion ang nangyari po kasi dito kung ano yung nalikom na pwedeng ibigay Kasi ang uh, utos ng presidente, uh, kung ano yung available, ibigay na kaagad because, you know, they're starting and there are a lot of uh, things that they need to attend to, particularly dun sa pangsweldo ng mga tao dahil nagkaroon na ng transition. And that therefore, uh, I want to just naka-survive naka naman sila and uh, ito na nga, uh, okay. as you've said, there are a lot of birth pains and uh, we also commiserate with the uh, um, the farm uh, government and uh, following the strict uh, orders of the president, talagang todo po suporta uh, ng DBM sa sa farm po. Mm -hmm. Dr. Marcos, thank you, uh, Secretary Abisado. Before I ask uh, Senator De La Rosa to propound questions, heads up lang sa Banko Central ng Pilipinas. Last last year, the president signed into law Republic Act 11439, yung Islamic banks. Heads up ko na, tatanungin ko kayo mamaya, ano na yung mga nagawa niyo rito in terms of uh, regulations, uh, as there have been efforts done to facilitate financial transactions, 
uh, within the BARM area, especially we have some concerns relative to the downloading in Region 12 uh, of the funds allotted for uh, the BARM uh, government. Ano na yung nagawa niyo rito? So, Senator De La Rosa, you have questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney Sinarimbo, uh, public order and safety is to be enforced and maintained by the Philippine National Police. Is there already a police regional office in Bangsamoro Autonomous Region as uh, mandated to be created by Section 2, Article 11 of uh, the Organic Law? Thank you, sir. As of today, sir, wala pa hong creation. Ni-rename lang po yung dating regional office ng PNP in the autonomous region. Yung former ARMM, ni-rename lang po yun. Thank you. How about the Napulcom regional office? The same. Ni-rename lang rin ninyo. Wala pa rin pong creation for as far as uh, the national government. Yung National Police Commission in the ERMM, yung pa rin ho ang nagsaserve sa amin. Thank you. How about yung mga MILF and uh, MLF members from the Bangsamora Autonomous Region na pinasok sa Philippine National Police? Meron na ba tayong uh, from uh, MLF, MILF na nasa PNP na ngayon? As, as far as the provision on sa organic law for the MNLF and MILF combatants to join the Philippine National Police, uh, yung pong MILF, wala pa hong guidelines yung National Police Commission doon sa entry ng MILF, pati yung uh, waiver as provided in the law. Ang meron po ay yung dati na, na integration during the 1996 peace agreement ng Moro National Liberation Front. Yung MILF po, wala pa po. Itong sa ngayon, wala pa. Yung... Do you have somebody from Napolko, Mr. Chairman? May nibitahan ba tayo? The ALG. Pero I don't know kung can you share something to us? Uh, Senator, as of now, wala pa pong ginagawa. Thank you. It's already one year. Secretary, Secretary. Uh, the, and uh, this, uh, the Imailip combatants are doing nothing. Sabi nga ni Atty. Sinarimbo, parang felt, uh, feeling left out daw sila dahil hindi naman sila may pasok doon sa, sa civil service dahil uh, yung mga civilian ang kinukuha. So expect, expecting sila na sila mapunta sa armed force or sa security force. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Sir, based on the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the MILF, uh, will be trained uh, as a member of the J JPST, more, more, more than, uh, uh, it will be 3,000 and 3,000 from the armed forces and the PNP. As of this moment, we are waiting for, still for the list. The fund is already there, the 400 million for the training and also the funding for the subsistence of the uh, JPST is, uh, uh, is already there last year. And uh, we're still late waiting for the, for the list. Uh, the 6ID and other training uh, uh, camps of the armed forces is already ready for the, you know, the acceptance of the training, and we are just waiting for the, you know, for the, for the submission of the list through, through, the, through the panel. We raised this to, 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 to the last uh, panel meeting, and we're still waiting, sir. So the list should be coming from... The from list from, 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 from the MILF. From the MILF. Uh, uh, the MILF uh, implementing panel. Because because we have we have uh, we have we have uh, organized the Joint Peace and Security yeah, go. Committee, which handled the training of the uh, Joint Peace and Security Team, and as as of this moment we already already trained uh, more or less uh, 250 of, of them, and we're still waiting for the for the you know, for the for the list. I already talked to Sir IQ Iqbal to copy uh, give us the copy of the you know, the listing. So that we can immediately train, because the the fund can be you know, can be uh, divert, uh, revert back to the treasury if it will not be used this this year, because uh, the fund is only extended uh, up to 2020 this uh, December. And uh, for the information of everybody, also 
uh, the Armed Forces of the Philippines is accepting qualified applicants from from both the MNLF and the IMILF. And we are also talking with the IMNLF that uh, uh, we might you know, we might consider also uh, providing uh, some sort of uh, regular quota for them every year. Uh, we are talking already with the Philippine Army, and uh, we are we are still negotiating on on the possible quota for the MNLF and the MILF. Thank you for sharing that. But I, I saw uh, the Minister of Local Government raising his hand. Kayo pa lang hindi pa nagsasubmit ng, ng list, uh, kaya wala pa daw training. Uh, is it correct? Sir, yung pong joint peace and security teams at saka yung joining in the PNP, magkaiba po yun. Yung pong JPST is a transitional security arrangement during the transition period where yung Moro Islamic Liberation Front combatants, armed forces of the Philippines, Philippine National Police, will be trained together and deployed together in areas that we jointly agree. So, limawa po, uh, kung ang inaddress natin ay yung ISIS BIFF, then we should be deploying them jointly in the SPMS box in Maguindanao. Iba po yun. Yung pong, uh, yan, JPST, sir, meron ang ongoing na joint training sa camp in North Cotabato ng Armed Forces of the Philippines at saka sa camp ng PNP sa Parang in Maguindanao. So, merong ongoing na training. Ang wala lang dyan, sir, ay yung deployment ng forces except yung deploy natin doon sa uh, depo kung saan naka-store yung firearms na binigay ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front sa independent decommissioning body. But yung regular provision of the organic law on the MILF and the MNF joining the Philippine National Police hindi pa ho na-operationalize yun dahil wala pa hong guidelines from the NAPOLCOM. Yes, I understand that. Uh, iba yung purpose niyang sinasabi mo na on undergoing ang training para sa transition yan, di ba? Pero yung tinatalo natin dito is yung regular. But I, I understand it will take time, mahaba pa ang proseso at may kakaroon pa ng training. Kaya nga, when I was the chief PNP, I was informed, I was, uh, I received a report coming from the ground na yung tinitrain natin ngayon na ano siya, joint uh, peace and security ganun. they reported to me that yung mga MILF component daw ay mas snappy pa at mas magaling pa kaysa regular army at regular PNP uh, nag-excel daw sa training yung mga MILF at MILF mas magaling pa sabi nga nila uh, that's uh, the report I got from the ground. Is the, am I correct, uh, General Galvez? Sir, uh, I personally saw their, no, their behavior, and uh, you are uh, really correct, sir. Some of, some of those and many of those are really qualified to become uh, members of the armed forces and the PNP. So, the, the more that we should be motivated to, to receive them into armed forces, sir, dahil I, na nga, magagaling sila. Mas, you, disiplina, mas disiplinado pa yung iba. Kaya bilisan natin, sir. Uh, I hope uh, expedite na natin yan. Sir, actually, sir, may mga uh, negotiation na kami with the armed forces. Actually, sir, ang pinaka-priority for uh, possible uh, integration to the armed forces and the PNP are those uh, who are, were trained uh, at the JPST because we, uh, we saw that uh, they are, they are be very much qualified. That's why we are hurrying up uh, for the listing so that uh, the integration of the MILF I will be taken from the GPST because mas magandado na po yung training eh. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's all for me uh, for now. Thank you. Wala itatanong ko lang kasi nabalitaan natin na end of the year, 8,000 decommissioned MILF, tapos 12,000 decommissioned uh, early 2020 po. Anong ginagawa ng mga yon kung uh, hindi pa natin na uh, ma-operationalize yung plano, whether for the transitional force or for the regular forces? Anong ginagawa po ng mga MI na decommissioned? Secretary Galvez po. Um, uh, we, we, we have uh, we have a program for the, the commission combatants, their families, and the communities. Uh, for no, for each combatant that will be decommissioned, the they are given uh, more or less one hundred uh, one hundred thousand cash grants each. That's right. Uh, uh, I saw that with the livelihood component on top of that. Yes. Pero uh, anong ginagawa nila? 
Actually, Sin hindi pa natin uh, ma-confirm. I'm sure mahirap gawin yung listahan kung 12,000 yan tapos ipapasok sa 3,000, masikip talaga. Yeah, actually ma'am yung ano yung uh, combatants are most most of them are really ano sir, may medyo may mga katandaan na karamihan. And then uh, most of them are not uh, really uh, into the ano to the integration of the armed forces. Our so, hindi is, sila yes, bahagi yes, ng uh, intended integration, yes, whether transitional or regular? Yes, ma'am. The, you know, the, you know, the transition that we will be having is for the socio-economic uh, project to be given for the combatants, uh, their families, and the communities. Ang retirement and uh, separation na ito? Uh, yung, ma'am, yung, ano, yung uh, ginagawa po natin, we, 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 ano, we, through EO79, we had the, you know, the inter-cabinet cluster on normalization. Uh, it is composed of four four uh, bodies: the uh, security transitional ar arrangement, uh, the socio-economic uh, uh, committee, the transitional justice, and the con confidence building measures. Uh, right now, uh, the DBM has given us um, two billion for un unprogrammed funds, and we intend to to provide uh, uh, packages for the, the transformation of camps. Uh, we will be uh, allocating more or less one 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 hundred million. Each of the six camps that uh, will be, you know, will be uh, converted into villages. Those uh, socio-economic uh, uh, agencies, including DepEd, CHED, uh, DSWD, and also partly yung uh, DPWH, uh, they, they, they will, you know, they will uh, provide uh, their services, uh, their, their services to the, you know, to the, to the combatants, particularly on um, education, uh, the TESDA. And also uh, uh, giving, ano, giving, giving of uh, the the uh, scholarship Secretary, grants. Secretary Galvez, ito yung sinasabi ni uh, Minister uh, Manub kanina na meron kulang sa normalization process yung ilang national government agencies, the SWD na banggit mo, education, TESDA, the housing component pa yan. Sino lahat ang nag-shepherd nito? Kasi ang naghihintayan eh. Ang nag-shepherd si, po dito, dito si, sir. Sino captain ball dito? Ang nag-shepherd po dito, sir, is uh, yung Joint Normalization Committee, which is jointly headed by both the government and the MILF. No, no, no. no. Ang ibig ko sabihin, paano mabibigay yung uh, tulong ng DSWD, yung tulong sir, ng sir, education? Sir, sir, tayo, sir, sir. EO79 is the one... Uh, yes. Who is, Who is in charge? Who is in charge? CAPSEC and myself, sir. Yun. So, kayo yun. Yes, so, sir. it's not uh, MINDA... So, ikaw siguro yun. So, yes, when do we expect uh, all of this to, ano, to be translated into reality? Kasi uh, naghihintayan tayo. Eh. Sir, actually, sir, ang ginagawa sir natin, no-orchestrate no, natin lahat, lahat ng mga agencies uh, to have yung tra the transformations of uh, the different camps and also the transformation of different combatants into a uh, capable, ano, sir. Sa so, ngayon, sir, ang inun namin, ang initial na naibigay natin, yung Sustainable Livelihood Program worth uh, 100,000. At the same time, uh, ngayon sir, ang inar namin, we, we are closely coordinating with the DSWD and TESDA and also DepEd to really concentrate their effort on uh, the, you know, the capacitation of the combatants and the families. So siguro, Secretary, kasama na rin yung pagkukulang ng NAPOLCOM na hindi pa lumalabas yung guidelines, siguro ikaw na rin yun. Yes, we yung we... heads up ko kanina sa Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas, malamang dagdag na rin sa yun kasi ikaw yung nasa ground eh. So ikaw yung o kulang ka pa BSP, kulang ka Civil Service Commission, kulang ka na Polcom, kulang ka DNR, kasama na lahat. So, yes, are we now uh, correct to uh, uh, conclude that the one in charge in terms of uh, putting in place all promises coming from the national government is your office? Yes, sir. My office and CAPSEC, sir. Siguro yung CAPSEC for purposes of reporting to the President, but... Uh, no, sir, the, the, the CAPSEC is the one orchestrating also the different agencies considering he is uh, in charge of the inter-cabinet clusters. So, dapat siguro ikaw na talaga. Ikaw na talaga yon. So, uh, Senator Marcos, any other questions? So, we'd like to acknowledge the presence here of the local government uh, officials. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Governor... Babae uh, muna raw, sabi ni Senator Marcos. Uh, Governor Mahunda Dato and then Governor Nancy Katamko siguro in terms of the 63 barangays in uh, Cotabato. So, ang, ang premise lang dito, are we now satisfied with the pace of what's happening in the BARM area, especially in your turf, uh, relative to the implementation of the organic law? We start with uh, 
Governor uh, Bay Maganda Dato. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Maganda umaga sa atin uh, Chairman Senator Tolentino, sa ating Senator Amy Marcos, and of course kay Sir Senator De La Rosa, sa ating lahat. Uh, may the greetings of peace and prosperity, prosperity be with us all. The enactment of RA 11054 is a blessing to the Bank Samoro as it paved the way for lasting peace in the region and boost economic and infrastructure development in our communities. The BARM has been lagging behind in terms of development and it was reflected in the 2015 PSA poverty incident. Being the poorest region, Bangsamoro Transition Authority as the governing body of BARM will end its term in 2022. And knowing that complexities on the ground, it is our appeal to this August body that their term be extended and instead hold the first election of the members of the parliament in May of 2025. Consistent with the Sangonian Panaluigan Resolution number 2019-349 of the province of Maguindanao, passed on October 15 of 2019. This is done because we are pursuing good governance or moral governance in the region and any amount extended should redound to the benefit of our poor and marginalized constituents. Governor, Governor can, I, can I cut you? Can, can you repeat that? Nag-uusap kasi kami ni Senator De La Rosa. You are uh, proposing a term extension yeah, for... Yeah, I am proposing an uh, extension of term for the BTA. And you have a Sangguniang Panlalawigan Resolution. Yeah, I it's have a Sangguniang uh, Panlalawigan Resolution. You can give this committee a copy, ma'am. Yeah, I have the copy okay. of it. Go ahead, proceed, proceed, ma'am. And in any amount of standards should redound to the benefit of our poor and marginalized constituents so that we can liberate ourselves from the bondage of poverty. We hope that the Congress of the Philippines, particularly the Senate, will hear our prayers for the continued support and guidance for better and progressive BARM. Uh, we all know that uh, BARM, especially the BTA, composed of 80 parliament. Majority are, uh, we have 41 in the MILF side, and uh, we have 39 on the government side. But as you observe, kung titignan po natin, yung government side, majority are recommended by some politicians. So I suggest that sana yung BTA natin, there must be a line, magkakaroon sila na alignment kung saan ba talaga patungo ang BARM, hindi yung bangayan. Dahil definitely, no, naglagay po tayo ng government to guide because we all know that this 49 MILF parliament are combatants, revolutionaries. From Baril, handling of arms, papunta sa pen. So it's very hard na magkaroon ng maiksing transition. So that's why I am appealing to the Congress as well as to the Senate to extend the transition of our warm BTA. Uh, Governor Bay, uh, before the, my, my other colleagues may, would make the responses, I, I'd like to have uh, Governor Nancy Katamko uh, specifically on the issue of the 63 barangays. Thank Governor. you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Your Honors, for inviting me here. Although I was just informed this morning, nakasama po yung pangalan ko dito, kaya nagmamadali ako. Because, um, in fact, we are also in quandary, no? Kung ano po yung talaga mangyayari doon sa 63 barangays. And the 63 barangays are also in quandary. Ano po, ano po ba talaga yung magiging treatment sa kanila? I just texted um, Sir Attorney Nagib Sinarimbo na maybe I, I also need to talk with the leadership and also with him kung papaano po ang mangyayari. Because as of now, we already had a symbolic turnover only. No? It was only a symbolic turnover, pero hindi pa talaga sila turned over. Right? Uh, attorney Sinarimbo, that was only uh, uh, symbolic. So, yun lang po, we are in quandary. 
uh, paano po ang treatment nitong 63 barangays as of now, sa ngayon, ano po ba talaga ang mangyayari sa kanila? Although, ang province naman po, lahat ng services namin ay na-extend naman namin doon sa 63 barangays. And we're happy to know na I think the, the BARM also allotted uh, 1 point something billion, no? 1.6 billion for the roads doon po sa 63 barangays. So, thank you, Your Honors. Well, siguro, we can have a response from uh, the Minister of Local Government and perhaps the DILG kasi tama, tama nga naman eh. Pa, pa, paano na yung uh, ira nito? Uh, saan kukuha? The DBM is still here. Pakatapos siguro yung uh, the, I'm, I'm glad may support pa sa Provincial Government of Cotabato But uh, this has to be addressed soon as uh, attorney. Uh, you have the floor. Yes, 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 sir. As of today, yung pong 63 barangays uh, tinern over sa amin uh, last year, uh, and as a consequence of that, we have included yung 63 barangays in the 2020 budget of the regional government. In fact, as the governor was saying, 1.3 billion of the Uh, total budget of the region is allocated for the construction of barangay roads in the 63 barangays. In my ministry, a local government operations officer have been assigned to supervise the 63 barangays. An office for the development of the 63 barangays have also been created. I think within the week, we will have an administrator appointed by the chief minister to coordinate the service delivery in the 63 barangays. So for this year, the focus of the regional government for the 63 is really to facilitate the immediate delivery of services. Last year, we've included the 63 barangays in our barangay development planning process, supervised by the Ministry of the Interior and local government. We've also trained them into providing contingency plan because these are barangays surrounding Daliguasan Marsh, which is perennially flooded. And so there's a contingency planning for flooding in the 63 barangays. The different ministries that are delivering social services, such as MSSD, Agriculture, Health, um, are already in the process of appointing the people who will be assigned in the 63 barangays. Thereafter, there will be a census this year conducted. If the result of the census would indicate that they would qualify into becoming municipalities, the Bangsamoro Parliament will decide to create municipalities out of the 63. So that is the way forward for us in the 63 barangays, sir. Because, Mr. Minister, under the organic law, you are uh, empowered to create Uh, LGUs except uh, congressional districts and automatically they will receive internal revenue allotment from the national government without passing through Congress. Unlike the other barangays we create here, it has to have a congressional imprimatur. So in your case, because of the organic law, you can create uh, an LGU and at the same time it gets an automatic uh, internal revenue allotment. So that's the plan of uh, the, the BARM Uh, to convert the 63 barangays into a municipality. Uh, at least may heads up kind of governor. And I think uh, DILG should take note of that. Uh, mababawasan kayo ng barangay, but you'll have a new, you'll have a new LGU. Yes, sir. As uh, uh, so of now, po, lahat po ng monitoring system namin ay eh, through uh, USEC uh, na, Sinarimbo po. So anything to do with the barangays or LGU sa kanya... Mr. Sinarimbo. Ah, Minister Sinarimbo, I'm sorry. Yun, sir. Uh, we are hoping na yung OP po uh, uh, i-revise yung uh, e, uh, executive order para magkaroon ng supervision power si Secretary Anyo. Thank you. Uh, with, the, with the indulgence of my colleagues and the other local officials here present, I, I, have, I, I just received a note and I, I take note of this that uh, some of your foreign partners will be leaving early And I, I recognize, I take note again of the billions of in investments coming from Malaysia, China, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, among others, who are really trying to help the Bangsamoro region uh, develop. So perhaps with your indulgence, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a chance to 
say a few words, especially the, the ambassador from Turkey uh, who, who arrived here at 8.30, the, the representative of the ambassador of Japan who, who I believe that you had a pledging session last uh, February 18. Uh, in, in Cotabato City, the Bangsamoro Friends Forum, uh, headed by the Ambassador of Japan. So, with your indulgence, uh, Ambassador Artemis Summer, uh, you have the floor. Uh, words of encouragement, or uh, you've learned a lot from, uh, from the, the discussion we had a while ago, so from Turkey, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, Honorable Senators and uh, Secretaries. Uh, dear colleagues and the ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, you for the kind invitation uh, to this uh, Senate uh, hearing. I would like to reiterate uh, uh, at this important occasion that Turkey, as from the beginning, uh, will continue its contribution uh, to the Philippine Southern uh, peace process. As you know, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chairperson, uh, Turkey is assuming uh, the chairmanship of IDB uh, since its uh, inception in uh, 2014 and is an active uh, member of the International Contact Group, the IGC. Uh, and we are also an active member of uh, the third party monitoring team uh, with the NGO, uh, with the NGO named uh, IHH. Uh, uh, we aim to continue to contribute to the socio-economic development uh, of BARM uh, via the Turkish International uh, Development Agency Tika, who has an office in Manila, uh, and uh, we would like to continue uh, to support the transition uh, process uh, with these uh, socio-economic development aid projects in close coordination, of course, uh, with the relevant uh, Philippine uh, authorities. Thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you very much uh, for inviting us again. We are taking note uh, from, uh, for, from this important uh, hearing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Ambassador. And perhaps from, uh, before Governor Sakur, uh, from the, from the J Japanese Embassy, uh, we realize that you've been involved uh, since day one. So we'd, we'd like to know uh, not a, we'd like to secure not a continuing commitment, but a, in terms of infrastructure development and how we can uh, facilitate the catch-up mechanism in so far as infrastructure, transportation, because uh, under the law, they get control not just of the airport, but including the ports. So I, I think uh, Japanese technology and, and experience would be uh, uh, of great help uh, as we uh, endeavor in helping them in this baby step, so to speak. Uh, Minister Yashu, yeah, Yushi Yamamoto, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable Senator Francis uh, Tolentino, Committee Chairperson on Local Government. Uh, Honorable Member of the Senate Committees and uh, uh, Honorable uh, Officials of the Philippine Government, and honorable member of the BTA and excellencies and colleagues of the diplomatic corps, uh, good morning. Uh, on behalf of the Ambassador Haneda, I'd like to appreciate the uh, committee for inviting Japan to this public hearing as one of the key partners uh, for the Mindanao peace process. Uh, having this opportunity, I'd like to give a, a brief presentation on updates relative to the uh, Pansamoro organic law. Uh, Japan has seemingly uh, cooperating to Mindanao peace process about political track and social development since 2002 through dispatching personnel to International Monitoring Team or IMT and contributing 26 billion pesos for social development. Based on uh, ratification of BOL, uh, aligning with the uh, progress of implementation, Japan has continued to strengthen its assistance under three strategic pillars, which are uh, 
uh, transition period by strengthening capacity of Bansamoro Transition Authority or BTA. Uh, number two, uh, normalization process and social economic infrastructures. Uh, we realized uh, that uh, peace in Mindanao is an essential element for regional stability. In that sense, we have operated it together with Defense Equipment Cooperation and support to Philippine Coast Guard in the region. Uh, we observed BTA is steadily managing and achieved the budgeting of block grant and the integration of the first Bansamoro development plan based on 12-point priority agenda. Furthermore, we uh, welcome transfer of 63 uh, barangays of North Cotabato. We also recognize the Philippine government is carrying out strong support to BTA. We highly appreciate the implementation of the normalization process, including the decommissioning of the combats and livelihood program for decommissioned uh, combats and communities. Uh, let me also uh, elaborate a little bit uh, more about uh, Japanese cooperation. Uh, number one, on January 2019, Japanese government dispatched 13 members of the uh, plebiscite uh, monitoring team to Kotabato, headed by the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. Number two, Japan is supporting BTA on budgeting of block uh, grant, a revenue code, and Bansamoro development plan. A continuous cooperation with uh, Intergovernmental Relations Body, or IGRB, is also taking place. Human resource development for BTA, including the officials uh, phasing in, are being uh, formulated. Number three, we continue our support to the normalization process by uh, contributing 300 million pesos to joint peace and security teams, or JPST, and uh, uh, independent uh, decommission body, or IDB. We are also carrying out uh, uh, improvement, uh, improvement of life, livelihood for uh, MILF uh, camps and uh, surrounding communities uh, to transfer technology of upland rice production. And number four, in this regard, Japan and the United Nations to co-hosted uh, Bansamoro Friend Forum in Kotabato last month. Uh, this event was collaborated by OPAP and BTA. Uh, agendas were the progress of the normalization process and the transition period by BTA, and over 330 participants attended. Uh, number five, to share how the Japanese administration exclude, uh, execute its management, we invited BTA Chief Minister uh, Ibrahim and BTA Minister Gela to Japan. Uh, number six, regarding uh, the socio-economic uh, infrastructure, we have been conducting road network development project. Uh, it's uh, 10 billion pesos. Uh, the project for improvement for uh, power distribution, 385 million pesos. Rehabilitation of uh, Malawi city, 1.5 billion pesos, among others. Uh, lastly, but not least, uh, we have just begun a master plan on urban infrastructure development in Kotabato City. Uh, before I end my presentation, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the Philippine government for awarding Japan for Peace Process Champion Award on September 2019. Uh, we will work together with the Philippine government and the Bansamoro government for lasting peace and development in Bansamoro. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, arigato gudaimas, uh, Minister Yamamoto. Uh, I, I direct a query to uh, speaker, the speaker and, and the minister, and perhaps the members of the uh, diplomatic corps here. I understand you've been involved since day one in several initiatives relative to, to the BARM, but I have yet to hear, I have yet to see on paper, uh, BSP take note of this, any initiative that would uh, put in place a sustainable structure for finance, for banks. And I think this is the expertise of not just uh, the British government, the Japanese government, 
uh, a, any, any initiative that would uh, put in place a strong structure for an Islamic bank. The, the president just signed uh, last year, I mentioned a while ago, Republic Act 11439. Though this is not part of the organic law, I'm making a, I'm making a suggestion. Uh, foreign affairs is reserved to the national government. But that does not prevent the BARM from uh, expanding the definition of their autonomy to include in, in relative to loans and official de uh, development assistance and the grants and foreign assistance in, in uh, Section 6 to put in place an external affairs office that would deal with the institutionalization, strengthening of banks and financial institutions. Kasi a while ago, napag-usapan natin yung uh, Region 12, na doon din na-download, na medyo magulo-gulo yung dadaan pa sa Bureau of Treasury. Is it not possible, and I take note, BSP again, ang dami nyo ng notes, na palakasin natin yung Islamic banks through the assistance of the uh, different governments present here, and with the establishment of an external affairs office, which is not which is not uh, prohibited under the 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 organic law. What is prohibited is for you to deal in foreign relations, which is reserved to the national government. So uh, I'm just uh, thinking out loud that perhaps if this can be done, you have an innovative way of interpreting. Uh, the organic law without transgressing the organic law, but this, at the same time, uh, you you strengthen the financial mechanism of the bar. Pwede po ba yun, uh, Minister, uh, and, and as our speaker, whoever would want to speak, kasi wala ako nakitang external relations office ninyo eh. Parang ang lumalabas, hodgepodge lang. May, mayroong forum, nagkita-kita. So, para lahat ng ito, eh, mag, mag, magkaisa na lang sila. So, baka ang Ang, ang expertise ni British government, eh, isang institution din na gano'n sa education. I, 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 I mentioned uh, certain universities in London that can help you. So, merong isa kayong external affairs office, which is not prohibited. Baka si Japanese government, not just JICA, yung mga banks naman, matulungan yung mga Islamic banks. Can you do that through an act of parliament? Uh, are you allowed to do that? Wala ko nakitang bawal dito. A uh, minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for opening up a very, very important area for further enhancing the, the viability of the autonomous region and, in effect, helping the whole country develop its capital market. The organic law provides for the authority of the regional government to avail of loans um, and uh, issue certain documents that would uh, allow us to access financing both locally and uh, outside of the country. The other important provision of the organic law is on the participation of the regional government in the Philippine Amana Bank or Islamic Bank. Uh, we have had several discussions already with the Secretary of Finance on the possible transfer of the Philippine Amana Bank to the regional government so that we will have uh, a bank that would allow the regional government to attract uh, investments coming from uh, Muslim countries because there's a lot of cash from uh, Muslim countries and if the legal framework to allow the operationalization of Islamic banking and finance in the country is improved, we will have uh, the ability to uh, attract this money going into the country and therefore expanding the capital market of the country, not just of the region. Uh, we have several discussions already with the development arm of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation or the Islamic Development Bank based in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. There are also interests from the Qatar government uh, uh, which was introduced to us no less than by the Secretary of Finance, as well as uh, banks operating in Malaysia. So I think 
if we work together, national government and the Bangsamoro government, to create the enabling environment for Islamic banking and Islamic finance to really be mainstreamed in the country, then we will be tremendously expanding the capital market that would allow businesses to avail of uh, money coming from our neighboring countries and the Middle East. Uh, this would also spur economic development in the region because one of the perennial problems in the autonomous region is access to capital. The other one is that many of our people, and I speak in particular of the incident in Marawi, many of the families there lost their cash because they're not depositing it in a bank because they don't want to earn interest. So if there are certain arrangements uh, with an Islamic bank that would allow them to earn money and safe keep their money without earning interest, then we would also be uh, providing a mechanism for circulating money in the, in, the, in the region and in the country. So that's my hope, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, and I hope we can really work together with the, um, with the national government on providing the enabling environment for this. Mr. Minister, I hope in the future too, my, my colleague here is listening, perhaps we can evolve a system uh, to consider the presence of our millions of FWs in the Middle East utilizing a Filipino Islamic bank as their remittance conduit or banking institution and at the same time help the Bangsamoro region. Diba? And dami natin kapabayan sa Middle East. But that's another topic. We'd, we'd like to acknowledge... Uh, uh, Congressman Sinsuat and then uh, uh, Governor Sakurtan uh, in that uh, order. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is just a uh, short manifestation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, distinguished guests, distinguished senators, uh, fellow workers in the government, uh, I shall not uh, further belabor on the other accomplishments of the BTA with regards to its mandate, for I am certain that its officials and officers present in this hearing are well prepared and very much competent to report and articulate the BTA's achievements in the implementation of the Bangsamoro Gap Law. I am confident that the current officials of the BTA are up to their task and shall diligently address and overcome the challenges they face, no matter how difficult they are. However, I would like to take this opportunity to express some observations that the BTA hopefully would take consideration and notice of. I would like to ask the BTA to convene the RDC because uh, pag walang RDC, hindi po makapasok yung projects sa NEP. So, kinakalangat din po, I'm asking the uh, BTA and they need to the Bangsamoro Parliament to prioritize the passage of the following regional laws, and these are the election code, the administrative code, the local code, local government code, the civil service code, and the educational code. These regional codes will greatly facilitate the establishment of institutional mechanisms for the better governance of the autonomous region and its constituents. Furthermore, this representation has received reports regarding minor level issues that nonetheless need to be addressed. Not all separated employees of the defunct arm were able to receive separation pay. And delayed releases of salaries of current employees, which compel affected employees to avail of loan sharks and become victims of usurious interests. Lastly, this representation's attention was called on the presence of an unusual number of armed escorts by some members of the Bangsamoro Parliament while engaged in the duties which cause anxiety among the other members affecting their performance as a result. Some members of the Parliament have even gone to the extent of requesting the Philippine National Police for the assignment to them of police escorts in reaction to it. It appears that this, this situation does not bear of a healthy and conducive working environment. 
I respectfully appeal to the BTA to kindly take a look on these issues and concerns and take appropriate actions if warranted. The Bang Samoa Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao is a collective solution to the rightful clamor of the Bang Samoa people to chart out our own destiny as a peaceful and pro progressive region. Truly, the transition period is an uphill battle, considering that the Bang Samoa is rising from the ashes of decades of conflict aggravated by the rise of terrorism, the face of which we have recently seen in the Marawi seeds. The Bang needs the support of the national government and the Filipino people as a whole to succeed in its their gun to one task to finally bring peace and progress to the Bansamoro. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, but can I, can I have a, a rehash of the statement you mentioned, that the armed escorts that uh, uh, produced a, apparently a negative consequence? Pakiulit po yan, while Secretary Galvez is here. The, uh, lastly, this representation's attention was called on the presence of unusual number of armed escorts by some members of the Bangsamoro Parliament while engaged in their duties which, which caused anxiety among the other members, affecting their performance as a result. Some members of the Parliament have even gone to the extent of requesting the Philippine National Police for the assignment of, to them of police escorts in reaction to it. It appears that, it, that the situation does not bear of a healthy and conducive working environment. Thank you, uh, Congressman. Any reaction, <coughs> Secretary Galvez, and uh, perhaps Speaker Balindong, uh, if he's around? Sir, I, I, I believe uh, the, you know, the, the escorts that uh, the congressman is uh, referring is uh, pertaining to a, uh, um, a member from uh, Del Norte. For the information of the congressman, uh, we advise him to, you know, to, to really, you know, to really downsize yung uh, kanyang escorts. And uh, to, uh, the, the escorts that uh, he is having is unarmed. Uh, actually, sir, ang ginagawa sir namin, ang ginagawa namin sa kanya, kasi he has some, uh, some he has a lot of cases. And he's, uh, he's nearly, uh, he, he, was, he, he was with me uh, yesterday. He informed me that he, he nearly been, ano, been uh, tried to be assassinated. Kasi merong, ano siya, merong motor na sumunod sa murot sa kanya. Uh, and he is very, very much, ano, very much uh, an office of security. So what we are doing right now is uh, really, yung mga tao niya sirang gusto sumama, he even, ano, he even wanted to have a very minimum Barely minimum, no, minimum escorts. But his, no, his troops uh, really uh, are worried uh, on his uh, safety. So what we did is uh, normally when he uh, went to the, you know, to Cotabato City, he's, he's being escorted by, you know, by, by, you know, by the CCCH. We have the, you know, we have the uh, the joint uh, committee on the cessation of hostilities, wherein he, he, you know, he, we, we provided some some armed escorts. From this CCH, so that uh, he will be uh, feeling the, you know, the security, and uh, he is not, you know, he is not actually said he is not, he is not the dalasan ng firearms. Ever since nung ano, nung nagano kami, uh, he never had uh, firearms. Ang ginagawa sir ng mga militares, sila po ang nag-escort ng ano ng uh, with, the, with the vehicle. We called it uh, the, you know, the, the escort vehicle, so that he will be secured. Kasi ang ano asen namin that uh, if we will uh, have uh, many escorts. This will uh, cause uh, uh, alarm from uh, from uh, the civilians. So, sang uh, sir, I believe uh, that's what we, we are continuously telling him, and I believe he's abiding that uh, he he doesn't have any armed escort even going here in Manila. Uh, Secretary, you have that under control during session days, lang naman siguro yan. Sir, actually, sir, yun sarang lagi niya kasi ano yung worries kasi he. Uh, yes, he has a lot of ano, talaga, sir, na, uh, worries about uh, his, his life. So, so why don't we just give him, provide him a, a police security? Uh, yun ang nirequest niya, sir, na oh. yung dalawang, uh, dalawang police niya na, na kamag-anak niya ang mag-escort sa kanya. 
then now we already uh, uh, write a letter to the GPNP. Okay. Maliwanag na po siguro yan, Congressman. Uh, Governor Sakurtan. Uh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I proceed, may I just uh, introduce my, my the delegation go from ahead, the province ahead, of Sulu. Uh, the province that rejected BOL, uh, <laughs> but still included in this uh, ban order, we still have a pending petition before the Supreme Court. Uh, we have here uh, mayors from uh, Sulu. Uh, we have uh, Mayor Sheila Tan Hayudini. We have uh, Mayor uh, Burahan of Bata, Mayor Taib of Pangutaran, Mayor Kerkartan of uh, Hulo, Mayor uh, Alun of uh, Kalingalan Kalwang, Mayor Berto of Pandami, Mayor Abdurajak of Panamao, Mayor Long of Parang, Mayor Burahan of Panglima Tahil, Mayor Radar of uh, Lucos, Mayor Arthur Muxan of uh, Siasi, and uh, our Barangay Captain, uh, Barangay Captain uh, Ayudini from uh, Patigul Sulu, uh, Vice Mayor Burahan and Vice Mayor Halun, of course, member of the Parliament, uh, si Jess Burahan. The uh, government of Sulu is now here. Welcome to the Senate. Go ahead, Governor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, ang sakin uh, is uh, to support it is that, that although we rejected it and uh, we are also given that opportunity to go up to the Supreme Court to question it and it's still pending. And, uh, but uh, while it is true that the Chief Minister was also in Hulu, we were together in Hulu yesterday and we flew uh, to Manila also together last night. And, uh, the Chief Minister was there to distribute some uh, relief items, as well as uh, actually Senator Bongo was already in Hulu very, very much earlier, as well as uh, Mayor Sara uh, Duterte was also in Hulu to distribute also relief assistance to the uh, victims of the uh, fire in uh, Hulu. And uh, we are uh, very grateful that uh, finally the Chief Minister came down to Sulu despite my uh, invitation for him to uh, come to Sulu. And uh, in fact, uh, I told him and I told the crowd that uh, finally the Chief Minister came. Uh, when I invited him without the calamities, he did not come. So he only came uh, when Ongulo was burned. So, may, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Chairman, I invited him uh, for uh, to have lunch in my uh, house. We had lunch uh, together with the other ministers uh, right in my uh, uh, house. So, at uh, nangako naman ako sa kanya na if uh, they are going to uh, implement the provisions of the law of the Sabang Samoro in the best interest of our people, and we think it is the best interest uh, of our people, we will support him if ever, if ever he runs for any uh, office or runs as uh, governor or chief minister of uh, BAM. That is it. It is to the best interest of our uh, people. Now, now we, we, we already had uh, concerns. In fact, we had this concern of ours in the presence of uh, the President, uh, in the presence, of course, si, and the Roman si Chief Minister, uh, Tony Sinarimbo was present, Secretary uh, Galvez was also present, and uh, several other uh, governors were there, uh, some members of the uh, uh, cabinet were there. At uh, sinabi naman namin, na while the law says that there should be a gradual, gradual pacing out of employees, from their respective offices, it's just gradual. And uh, I believe when it is gradual, there must be a replacement. And you do not just uh, remove them from office. But at the moment, there are barely 
employees in these uh, different offices. This worries us because as governor and as chief executive of my province, I can hardly govern. I can hardly administer the affairs of government alone. So take the case of the Department of Agriculture. There used to be 109 employees in uh, for the province of Sulu. Now there are only eight. Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, there used to be 11, now you have one. Department of Environment and Natural Resources, there used to be 104, now there are five. Department of Science and Technology, three, uh, there used to be three, now there is none. Department of Interior and Local Government, there used to be 35, they have 18 with appointments and they are on immersion for the last three months. Department of Labor and Employment, there used to be four, now they have none. Department of Agrarian Reform, there used to be 89, now they have 12. Department of Trade and Industry, there used to be 20, now they have three. Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, District 1, there used to be 34, now they have 13. Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, Second District, there used to be 44, now they have 12. The Sulu Area Equipment Service, the DPWH, there used to be 34, now they have two. TESDA used to have eight, now three. National Telecommunication Commission, there used to be two, now they have none. RPMA, one item, they have one item. 57 job orders, now they have, not, they have 21. LTFRB, there used to be 10 job orders, now they have none. Marina, one, a commission on higher education, they, uh, all of them are retained. Department of Tourism, there is no, uh, there is none. Now, this uh, has concerned me uh, so much, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I said, I can, I can hardly govern. And we have been talking about funds, talking about block grants, but I said, what good is there in having block grants if you do not have these structures? Now, we heard uh, Secretary Abisado telling us that he has already released as much as 72 billion uh, pesos. But how are we going now to implement these uh, 72 billion pesos if you do not have this structure? I should know. I should know because I have been governor for what? Four times, five times? Oh. So I also know how, how hard it is to be uh, scrutinizing appointments, telling us that 43,000 positions vacated. There are 281,000 applicants. I cannot, uh, in a, I cannot imagine how you are going to scrut scrutinize 281,000 applicants for 3,000 positions. If you can uh, uh, scrutinize maybe 100 a day, how long would it take you to uh, go over 281,000? So, it is a mind uh, bugging to, I mean, uh, it is unimaginable. I told them, as governor, I can hardly sign two appointments a day because I have to do other things. Unless, even at night time you, you sign, you, you can never, I mean, uh, finish this okay. uh, for, for the next uh, three years or during your, uh, during the your transition. Concern, and I'll be asking uh, uh, again uh, uh, the bar minister to, uh, to respond and the, perhaps the Civil Service Commission, uh, Civil Service to make a response. But uh, to, to, cut, to cut you, uh, not so abruptly, but to, uh, with, with due respect, Governor, pasalitain ko lang ng three minutes ang aalis na kasi tong British Embassy. Uh, and to simmer down the seemingly passionate uh, conversation we have now, uh, I'll, 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 I'll give a chance uh, to uh, the judge of the affair of British Embassy, Mr. Alistair Totti, a few minutes, uh, not relative to what uh, the good governor has been saying, but uh, to the overall scheme 
of what are uh, what we've been doing for the last several hours. Thank you, Mr. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Governor. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, gracious indulgence. I'll be I'll be very brief. Um, uh, like others, I just want to make sure that uh, our distinguished guests also recognise, as I'm sure the committee does, the long. Mr. Totti, yes, your your from your end, you've had experience on this. That's, that's what I'm about to talk about. Uh, Irish Republican Army, I'm, I'm a gonna, lot of other things. I'm going to tick all those boxes very, very yes. briefly. So as, as you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, the UK has a long history uh, dealing with uh, this issue in the Philippines, and we're proud to be a founding member of the International Contact Group, which, of course, is where our experience uh, comes from, and indeed has raised expect expectations rightly about what the British can do to continue to support this really important process. I think it's worth explaining why the British government might have relevant experience. So as you rightly say, we have our own peace process experience born out of years of difficult learning, particularly on Northern Ireland. We also have experience with devolution, devolved assemblies, devolved autonomies, which are charged in a similar way to the bowl with delivering services for autonomous regions in the United Kingdom. So it was primarily for those two reasons which the Bank Samoro people and the Philippine government has rightly looked to us to share that expertise. What's gone well, what hasn't gone well, what are the lessons and how can we learn from those lessons? So I'm delighted that those have been useful in terms of the passage towards the bill and now with the signing of the bill and the peace process which is going forwards. So in the last year or so, my government has been working with the new, with the BAM and with the, the BTA and the new parliament to understand from them what is the most useful thing the British government can do to support this process in coordination with our fellow donors and the national government. And there, there is one thing which we think is most important, which breaks down into three specific areas. So that one thing is building the capacity of the BTA. They have an incredibly difficult challenge being able to deliver before the elections in 2022 and convince the electorate that they are a credible body that is able to deliver as charged under the bill. So we want to build their capacity, and that falls into three areas. First of all, the specific capacity of the people working in the BTA. So we've been delighted to work with um, uh, Attorney Semerio uh, and his colleagues and the ministers to understand what their needs are when it comes to building the capacity of the BTA. And we're also working with NGOs, third parties, to, to, to produce a strategic plan for the BTA that will help them understand what their priorities are over the coming months and years and how they can deliver. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is to make sure that the BTA, BTA consistent with the bowl, is inclusive and representative of the peoples of the Bank Samoa region, with a particular focus on women. So we were very delighted that the BTA has now passed a bill establishing and creating the Bank Samoa Women's Commission. We are delighted about that, and we hope that will continue to empower especially women and their role in the autonomous region. The third element is about civil society and making sure the electorate fully understand what the BTA is for and how it is supposed to represent them, and so the BTA can understand what the needs of the electorate are in terms of services, infrastructure, etc., and have a proper relationship with civil society in the bomb. That's very ambitious, but we've already started it. We are working with NGOs, CSOs, we're ready on those three elements, but most of the funding will come on stream at the beginning of our financial year, which I'm sure you know is the 1st of April. That funding will amount to £3 million, or well around 200 million pesos per year going forwards. That is our starting proposition, but of course we can adapt can it repeat, going uh, forwards. Mr. Totti, yes. uh, three million pounds per year. Three million pounds, about circa 200 million pesos, I believe, per annum. We've shared the headline shape of that assistance with the DFA. We want to be completely transparent with the national government, as well as our, our BTA uh, colleagues and civil society counterparts, so that we're all on the same page understanding what it is we're doing and how it relates to similar assistance, for example, that you've heard about from the EU delegation this morning, also to build capacity of the BTA, because we do not want to duplicate or conflict with other donors. So it's very important for us there is transparency and coordination between the national government, the BAM, 
and donors. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Alistair Totti. I, 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 I hope the BARM officials took note of uh, the three, uh, three ingredients uh, uh, as explained by the charge of the affair uh, relative to their experience. So thank you, sir. We now ask the, the Minister of Local Government to respond to the concerns raised by Governor Sakurtan. Uh, especially the uh, non-immediate non, uh, replacement of those terminated, the seemingly understaffed offices vital to the needs of the bureaucracy, and the understaffing uh, of the different offices mentioned by the good governor. But before, before you say something, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of Congressman Joel Sakdalan of the 1st District of North Cotabato. Welcome, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Minister. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you, uh, Governor Sakortan. We, we fully understand the concerns raised by the Governor, and we acknowledge the challenge uh, being confronted with respect to the immediate replacement of employees separated from service by provision of law. What we want to emphasize is that it was not a choice for the new regional government to separate the employees. It is by provision of law, except for three ministries which are essential and which was never touched. The bureaucracy stays. These are the Department of Education, the Department of Social Services, uh, and the Department of Health. So the most essential service delivery bureaucracy is intact. It is, it, it, it is still fully complemented. I, I, uh, I heard the, the higher education department. Yes, sir. That's, that's yeah. also uh, intact. So it's not touched. Uh, test the also, sir. Uh, it remains to be a complete bureaucracy in the region. The Ministry of Health also and the Ministry of Social Services. What we are currently having challenges are the other ministries which by provision of law have been abolished and a new bureaucracy is being set up. Uh, pursuant to that, the Ministry of Finance, Budget and Management have already created the necessary positions for the replacement of the items funded and created by the national DBM because under the organic law, the salaries will now have to be charged to the black grant. As a result of that, we will need to create an OSCA at the level of the regional government corresponding to new positions on the basis of the structure outlined in the transition plan approved by the Bangsamoro Transition Authority. That structure and the items provided there uh, provide for 8,444 items. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Minister, siguro ang tanong ni Governor, gaano katagal pa natin, gaano, gaano katagal pa ang panahon ang kailangan para ma-fill up pa natin ito? Yung example nga niya, ongoing na po. Isang sir. araw, dalawa lang daw yung na-fill up pa niya. So, gaano katagal po ito? Do we have a timeline, deadline for this? Y yes, sir. But our, our plan is that by the second quarter of the year, most of the positions would have been filled up. In fact, uh, Mr. Chair, na publish na ho yung karamihan ng positions in the civil service and in the jobs portal of the regional government. So, available na ho yung mga positions. Eh. Some of the positions have been filled up. In my ministry, we've appointed a total of 142 uh, employees already and are now deployed in the different municipalities of the region. Yung uh, MTIT, naka, nakapublish na rin po. Yung pong MSSD, nakapublish at nag-appoint na rin po. Yung pong ibang ministries na publish, may exam na po, interview na lang po ng personal selection board. We cannot shorten the process outlined in the civil service law. Sir, that, that's being followed. But the appointments are now being issued. In the Department of Education, 1,000 positions, teaching positions were already uh, filled up. May na-appoint na rin po. So, as we progress, uh, ma-fill up po yung mga items na yan. But, but we really are asking the indulgence of our uh, uh, governors na it is taking time because we wanted 
the process to be one transparent second that we get the best people in the region because if we are to deliver really in the transition then we will need good people who are committed and have the qualification to deliver on the so services. So, ibig sabihin, Mr. Minister, yung, uh, possible, yung applicants, the possible uh, uh, fillers up of the vacant positions would have to come from the region. Hindi pwedeng kumuha sa labas? Ganun ba yan? Pwede naman po. In fact, there were examinations conducted for applicants in Metro Manila, sir. Kasi may mga Bangsamoro, may mga non-Bangsamoro din who are interested to serve in the bureaucracy. We've accommodated them, sir. So, Governor, siguro maliwanag na po yan? Ah, hindi po maliwanag. Mr. Chairman, ah, kasi po, una, ah, yung sinasabi na ah, very soon, hindi po na siguro very soon yan. So I would, I would like to request uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if we can conduct I mean, a hearing such as this more open so that uh, we will have some sense of uh, security or uh, insurance that this is going to be done and done uh, uh, sooner. Uh, well, po, uh, kailangan ba natin talaga tanggalin those who are already experienced and replace them with the inexperience. Sabi ko nga sa kanila, kahit graduate pa sa Harvard, pag wala yan experience, ay mga pa yan. So, yun ang inaano namin. Ay may security of tenure naman ang mga ano, just because uh, Mayroon tayong batas, na bagong batas, the office has already been uh, dissolved. Uh, but the thing that is, we are on transition. So, during the transition, sana, transition talaga, we do it gradually. By replacing, I mean, uh, the, the, the replacement should be gradual. We bring in, and then we take out. So, sana ganun. Mula tayong uh, uh, abrupt at uh, tinatanggal lahat. Yun ang concern namin kasi kami nahihirapan. Like for example, public works. How are you going to implement these projects? Like block grants, so much block grants. Kung wala naman na uh, mag implement yan. Can you just imagine Mr. Chairman, wawalo ang tao ng, dalawang, uh, ng bawat uh, engineering district. Now, if I may go further uh, Mr. Chairman, there is also this clustering or the merger of several big offices, like the Department of uh, Education, ikaklaster mo ang uh, uh, CHED, ikaklaster mo yung TESDA. These are big offices. Even uh, DepEd alone is very, very hard to manage already. So, sabi ko nga, the national government is creating even more departments, contemplating to create the Department of uh, Water, Department of OFW, and so on. Dito naman sa atin, para naman napagagaling na natin, binimerge na natin. DepEd, CHED, at saka TESDA. Uh, DTI with uh, tourism. And so with other offices. So, kako, gano'n ba tayo kagaling? Uh, I remember, uh, Secretary uh, Galvez was in my house when he was West Mincom Commander together with then Secretary of the OPAP. And I was asking them on uh, the number of years, uh, uh, number of years ha have we been set back in terms of development? And uh, Secretary, Secretary Jess Duresa then asked my brother, as his undersecretary, to answer me. And the answer was 250 years set back in terms of development. So sabi ko, limang generation yan. Ibang beses kami mamatay, paggising namin, malayo na rin kayo. So, yun ang uh, sinasabi ko po. Kasi, the poverty incidence in the region is more than 70%. The national average is only 17%. So, that's how far we are, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ang gusto po namin ay umangat din kami. Now, uh, yung tungkol po sa Napolcom, ang Napolcom po ay pumunta na ako kay Secretary Anyo at uh, ang examination na dadalhin na sa Sulu. Ganoon din, pumunta rin ako sa PRC at ang examination ng teachers dadalhin na rin sa Sulu. So, to, ang toto po, yung uh, Napolcom sa region ay functional. Pumunta po sila rin sa amin to inspect the sites for the conduct of the examination in Sulu as well as the PRC uh, team 
they already came down to Sulu last week. Uh, maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. Salamat, Governor. Siguro, yung one concern kanina na narinig siguro ng DPWH, USEC, yung dalawa lang daw ang tao nyo per regional office doon sa BARB, is, is it correct? Uh, is it also a correct consequence that because of the limited number of personnel, perhaps the, uh, the concern of the good governor is baka madelay yung pag implement ng mga projects. Tama po ba yun? Um, <clears throat> honorable uh, Chairman, uh, Honorable Senator. We dispense with the Pantino. presence of the uh, Japanese uh, representative as well as the European Union. May abulin pa si... Go ahead, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Honorable, honorable, um, Madam Senator Aime Marcos, my colleagues in the national agencies and the BARM, Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatul Tano, Brakato. Mr. Chairman, the two months uh, or employees cited by the Honorable Governor is actually referred to the, to the local Minister of Public Works uh, organization, not the DPWS National. But honestly, Mr. Chair, I join the sentiment of the Honorable Governor citing the urgency for the emplacement of all the needed uh, personnel that runs the bureaucracy. And I also see the logic on the um, uh, ideas of uh, Minister Sinarimbo citing the procedures in getting into the hirings of the personnel, especially in the absence of the admin code that is really necessary for as basis for the uh, recruitment of personnel. Mr. Chairman, honestly, we, the Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, as I was directed by Secretary Mark Villar, upon signatures of the Honorable uh, President uh, Duterte in July 2018, the Bangsang Law, we were actually uh, instructed by Secretary Villar to take initiative on how to handle infrastructures per bank as an assistance to the development going around for the Bangsang Moro. We had actually, Mr. Chair, um, take initiative by coordinating directly with our colleagues from the Bank Samoro in the persons of Minister uh, Sami Kambal uh, Makakua. So, you the, the concern of uh, uh, the good governor perhaps now is misplaced. Even if the, yes. the, the grant is released, uh, may kapasidad naman ang BARM na i-implement yung mga projects. Tama there ba? are two financing here, uh, Mr. Chairman. The local INPA, which is actually catered, funded by the Black Grant, is actually under the Ministry of Public Works of the BARM, while the national INPA is catered by the national DPWH. This is actually specified, Mr. Chair, under the uh, Bank Samaritan Law. No. So, ibig sabihin, uh, in, in both instances, yung sa, sa local at sa national, Walang, wala tayong makikitang magiging delay nito sa tingin well, Wala po. On the national infra, we can proceed as uh, targeted on schedule, Mr. Chair. In fact, Section 37, Article 13 of the RE 1054 defines that national agencies or government should fund and implement national infrastructures and maintenance of the like roads, bridges, flood control, irrigations, water supply, and flood control. So all this, Mr. Chair, is actually under the national uh, mandate. And it is also through this um, uh, alignment, Mr. Chair, where we have also a good collaborations with OPAP in addressing the policy set forth for the IGR, where we have to interface with our colleagues from the BARM. So last 2018, uh, Mr. Chair, in sometime in June, we called for a, um, a Check, uh, workshop. For 2020, how much is allotted by the national government for infra for bar. For bar, Mr. Chair, there's about 7 billion pesos, Mr. Chair. But and these are all 7 billion. Infra. 7 billion. That's also, that's actually within the GAA. Then on top of that, Mr. Chair, we have a five yes. years program. Okay. That, that's Tongkmaro. over and above the black grant. Th that, this is different yes. from the black grant, yes. Mr. Chair. So, this is on top of the black so grant. So we, we expect that to be uh, implemented hand in hand with what BARM is doing. Yeah, Mr. Chair, okay. yes. And parallel to this, Mr. Chair, we actually uh, created the RPM or uh, Purple Samoro. It's a 400 uh, stop, new stop that we are actually asking the DBM for its approval because this will manage the national infrastructure DBM, budget. DBM, nandito ka na rin lang. Wala si Secretary. An ano yung yes. status nung nire-request? Na it's already been approved, Mr. Chair, oh, by tagad, Secretary... Abisado. And this was elevated, Mr. Chair, to the Office of Executive Secretary Metaldia for approval of the President. 
So, so once, could, once that is approved, what will happen? So we'll be recruiting, Mr. Chair, some personnel, technical personnel from the BARM, especially those that were actually misplaced. Okay. We'll be conducting some selections process. Okay. Because and make it sure that you get some applicants coming from Governor Sakortan. <laughs> yes. Para, yes para, yeah. Marami na kayo. And from BARM. Yes, Mr. Chair. We assured that most of those displays that are actually highly competent can be taken into account in this organization, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusek. Isang tanong na lang sa Civil Service Commission. Yung mga, yung mga naalis sa former ARMM structure, tapos nakatanggap ng separation pay sa pangkasalukuyang bang regulasyon ng Civil Service Commission, can, because of their competence, their experience, can they be rehired by the new BARM structure? Pwede ba silang, meron bang mga, meron bang mga gusot-gusot dito kahit considered uh, separated from the service, retired, was able to get uh, retirement benefits? Pwede bang ma-rehire yun? Uh, kung ano yun, consultant, ano ba yun po pwede nilang gawin doon? Uh, good morning. Kasi uh, tama rin si Governor sa Kortan, may experience na yung mga yun. Tama po yun. Well, uh, unless the law uh, prohibits the rehiring, uh, there is no civil service law that uh, will disallow it, uh, Mr. Chair. Even if you're uh, over age? Uh, no, uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, subject, of course, to national law because uh, if they already reach the mandatory retirement age, they cannot go back anymore, uh, unless in different capacity. Can this committee request an advisory opinion coming from your end, Civil Service Commission, addressed to the BARM? Yung, itong sinasabi mo ngayon. In, in the form of a, a black and white proposition that you can still rehire uh, subject to existing national guidelines, uh, the, former, the employees formerly uh, working with the arm and now separated. Para may guidance lang sila, para maliwan. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, can we do that next week? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, so, Governor, satisfied there on? Uh, <laughs> Minister of Local Government, Minister, they'll be issuing a, a circular relative to the former employees of the BARM. But again, under the organic law, uh, you have the discretion whether to hire or rehire. Tama po ba yan, uh, civil service? Uh, again, um, Mr. Chair, subject to this law and other existing na uh, national laws. But you'll be issuing the advisory next week? The advisory uh, opinion you. by next week, uh, Mr. You. Chair. Thank you, uh, Civil Service Commission. Uh, Mr. Minister? Uh, uh, sir, what the organic law provides is that there is a prohibition, prohibition within a period of five years for rehiring. They can be rehired under the organic law provided they return the separation pay. Yun po yung tunay na problema natin. We were opposed to this provision in the, in the deliberations. Kasi nga, marami hong qualified na magagaling. Pwedeng ma-rehire kasi qualified, pero ayaw na nila na isauli yung separation pay nila. Yun po yung tunay na problema. Uh, so, we're left with people who are willing to reapply and then return the separation pay. Marami din naman pong nagtitake ng risk, lalo na yung maiksi lang yung servisyo sa gobyerno. Pero yung 10, 15, 20 years na sila in service, they receive roughly around 7 million, they would not want to return. Ayaw na ho nilang isahuli yung pera, so ayaw na mag-reapply sa amin. Yes, sir, return to work or return the money? To the DBM, sir. That's the provision of the civil service. Any that's, that's what I was saying, uh, Mr. Chair, that if the law itself provides that they can be rehired, then the provision of that law will govern. But of course, subject to the condition, as is stated in the law itself. The problem with this law, Mr. Chair, if I may be allowed to say, to say it, is that uh, when this law took effect, it used the word abolition instead of reorganization. And in, except for the three departments earlier mentioned by Minister uh, Sinarimbo, uh, I think that refers to the health, social welfare, and uh, education, the rest are actually abolished, really abolished. And therefore, all the people there, upon effectivity of the law, will really have to go. And that the new government will have to have its own new organizational structure pertaining to uh, to the other positions, and they will have to start hiring again pursuant to existing uh, uh, procedures. That's, that's really the problem. That's why they cannot retain automatically those who are uh, existing because they have to come up with new items, uh, Mr. Chair. 
civil service as you as you draft craft your uh, advisory opinion look for precedents may mga nangyari na yan eh when they when they abolished the integrated national police and came out with the philippine national police there were positions uh abolish likewise so siguro maghanap kayo ng yes. ng uh, mga nangyari na noon uh, thank you for your uh, response so we'd like to have governor uh, bombit ajong and then uh, later on we'll have the uh, deputy head of mission of the australian embassy sir sorry because we know that in terms of uh, geographical proximity your country is nearest to the barn so we'll be asking you to speak last uh, with your respect <laughs> Uh, Governor Jong. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, honorable senators of the Committee on uh, Local Government. Uh, on the part of Lanao del Sur, uh, we have to wait uh, the Chief Minister to convene uh, the Council of uh, Leaders, which composed of the Barm Governors and uh, the Barm. Uh, Congressman from there, uh, so we can submit our uh, proposed uh, plans and uh, programs. And I think the Honorable uh, Chief Minister has already uh, scheduled uh, scheduled the convening of the uh, Council of uh, uh, Leaders. And uh, that says, uh, I have other concern regarding the uh, CMGP. Uh, ito po yung, sir, yung uh, nasabi ko na po sa iyo, the conditional matching grant to uh, provinces program for 2020. Uh, uh, nakita po namin sa DBM, uh, by 2020, ang BARM ay wala na po sa ano. Wala na po, sila, uh, wala na po kaming uh, CMGP, which is, uh, uh, wala naman po sa... Uh, farm or sa block grant which is hindi po dapat uh, uh, mawala sa uh, LGU uh, barm. Gusto po namin uh, uh, sana ngingin na extend and extend yung CMGP na ito para may tuloy po natin yung mga local roads uh, lalo na po sa uh, mga provincial roads uh, po namin considering na ang uh, block grant ng uh, ng BAM, eh, hati-hatiin po yan sa uh, five provinces. Andiyan na rin po yung 63 uh, barangays and uh, ang Cotabato. Uh, kung i-consider po natin yan, siguro po mas maliit. Maliit yung magiging share ng bawat isa sa amin. At ito pong CMGP, magiging dagdag po ito sa mga projects na ginagawa namin sa mga aming mga lugar, sa mga kalsada na ginagawa po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Governor. Siguro magtatanong din si Senator Marcos dyan. But you've heard the statement coming from the DPWH na merong 7 billion for this year. And uh, that's over and above the block grant. So yung, yung possibility na nahati-hati ito sa iba't ibang probinsya ng BARM na hindi na makakatanggap ngayon ang CMGP, uh, siguro yun ang dapat mapag-aralan ng DPWH. And then I'll be asking DBM. And perhaps the the barm can respond. Alis na ba talaga yung si MGP sa sa gagana si nabi ni Governor? Wala. Tapos si si barm yung bang corresponding na natas natapias sa si MGP. Pinalitan nyo ba yon doon sa barm budget para ma ma masagot yung kawalan? And Governor, you have to you want to add something. Sir, parang magkaiba po yun kasi po yung si MGP. Yan po yung uh, road users tax. De. Uh, bilang dating governor, doon sa liga ng ating mga gobernador na kung minsan pinupuntahan ko pa rin at hindi ako makatiis, si Governor Bombi, tama po yung sinasabi niya. Yung CMGP kasi, uh, talagang buong buo tinanggal lahat ng barn provinces sa uh, GAA 2020. Tama po yun. Kaya nagulat rin kami. Sa pagkatang pagkaalam natin, yung DPWH ay nakatutok sa primary and secondary national roads. Ito naman, ina-identify natin pati provincial road. Kaya hindi rin magkapareho yung project ng public works at saka yung CMGP na initiated ng ating mga probinsya. Ito yung problema natin sa DBM. And ma'am, 
uh, sana kung lahat natanggal yung ano, CMGP sa buong lahat ng LGU, okay lang sana po yun. Pero bakit po uh, BARM lang ang natanggal? Ano pong ano, uh, gusto po malaman? Ang logika kasi ng Congress nun, ang logika ng Congress nun, kung maaalala ninyo, at uh, ang uh, lower house represented rin naman ni Congressman Sinsuat, eh talagang uh, may black grant na rin ang ating uh, BARM. Bakit pa dadagdagan? Yun nga yung problema kasi yung ibang ahensya, katulad ng DA, may iba pang ahensya, katulad ng DPWH, mahabang debate po yun kung bakit may over and above pa dun sa 70 uh, billion na black grant. Doon kami nagkalituhan at uh, tama po kayo na talagang may level of inconsistency nga sa mga uh, final na listahan. Uh, eto nga, yung problema natin, yung CMGP, kung paano tatapusin yan, palibasa, sinasabi nga na i-include na lang ninyo sa share doon sa 70 billion ng Lanao del Sur. Ma'am, kasi di ba yung black grant, yung black grant na kukunin ng DPWH sa infra, eh kasama na po dyan yung, uh, ewan ko po kung nakakasama ang national, national roads, uh, kasama dyan yung provincial roads, municipal roads and barangay roads. Kasama na rin yung uh, opening, opening ng mga roads, yung mga diversion road. Pero ito pong CMGP, eh, iba po ito, exclusive po ito sa uh, provincial roads. Kaya hindi po namin pwedeng gamitin sa national, municipal and barangay roads. Tama. Yun nga ang uh, pinaglalaban natin noon sa Liga ng Gobernador na ma-institutionalize na to. Ngunit nga, ang sinasabi, yung provincial roads, pwede naman daw bigyan ng budget mula doon sa share ninyo ng black grant. Tama po ba yun? Kasi covered naman ng black grant ang iba't ibang klaseng kalsada. Uh, siguro, tanongin natin sa DBM at kina-attorney si Narimbo. Ano ba talaga ang breakdown para dyan sa mga sharing ng napakalaking halaga na black grant? So, so, Ma'am, for now, uh, I think the appropriate provision talaga sa organic law is Article 6, Section 13. This one pertains to national programs and projects. At ang provision is that the national government shall continue to fund itong mga programs na ito. Uh, such as, so may enumeration ka, but this is not exclusive uh, for peace, yung Pantawid, Pampamilya, Pam, Pantawid Pamilya Pilipino, Health Facility Enhancement Program, School Building Program, gaya po nung sinabi ko kanina, yung pong SBP sa BARM ay tinanggal na rin po sa GA 2020. Libat pa po doon sa SBP, sorry. School Building Program, ma'am. Uh, uh -huh. Yung retained hospitals of the Department of Health Peer Health, Social Pension for Senior Citizens, yung Task Force Baron Marawi, liban po rito may mga iba pang national agencies na nagtanggal na ng pondo para sa BARM. Uh, ang batas po nagsasabi na they should continue to fund itong national programs na ito in the BARM. Yung road user stops really, even during the arm period, uh, na merong infra fund na 10 billion uh, for roads, The national government then continued to fund that. Meron hong para sa mga probinsya talaga na para doon sa road users tax na ina-identify nila na mga road projects. So, ang hingi nga ho namin ay ipagpatuloy ho natin yun. Dahil nga po yung logic for the black grant is really just to hasten the development. Given nga na kagaya ng poverty incidence for instance since Sulu is 73%. Ang andayo na sa national average natin. So, kung gusto talaga nating umangat ng mabilis yung region, uh, yung lahat ng funding, and I'm, I'm referring to three specific, yung black grant that goes into the region, internal revenue allocation that goes to the LGUs, and the national funded projects that are still being enjoyed by other regions. So kung ipagtulong-tulong ko natin yun, mapapabilis natin yung pace ng development in the region. Yes, DBM. Ano nga yung justification kung bakit hindi nga sinama na itong uh, CMGP? Uh, wala na sa listahan yung BARM. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm Senator. Um, the CMGP is a conditional matching grant for provinces. Tama po si Governor na it's exclusively for provincial roads. And the uh, grant of the projects to specific provinces are subject to certain conditions including yung 20, yung 
Seal of Good Look, Local Housekeeping ng DILG, and several other documentary requirements. Now, in the evaluation of the um, of the projects, uh, I mean, of the program, it was identified that uh, since the uh, the BARM already has the uh, 70 billion of um, of the block grant, including the 5 billion for the uh, Special Development Fund, which is uh, be, to be released uh, for 10 consecutive years and to be reviewed thereafter uh, to uh, finance the rehabilitation, uh, upgrading of several uh, facilities in the uh, conflict-afflicted areas. The, um, black, the CMGP as it is now will be uh, instead uh, addressed to the province, provinces that are not part of the BARM. Considering that uh, the BARM, apart from the ERA being received by existing LGUs, including the provinces, will be receiving, uh, the, as I said, the block grant, including the Special Development Fund. So speaking as uh, a former governor and also as the author as of a CNGP um, bill that's now pending in the Senate, alam niyo ang uh, DBM hindi ko masyado na intindihan kasi itong CNGP para siyang share ng probinsya ng bawat probinsya sa road user tax. Eto ni tuloy naman lang share sa ira. Bakit tatanggalin yung share doon sa road users? Hindi ba tuloy-tuloy pa rin yun? Kasi kinokolekta pa rin yun. Ang bawat probinsya may karapatan na magkaroon ng bahagi noon. Bakit tinanggal bigla yung CMGP? E eh, di tanggalin na rin yung ira. Lahat ng share, wala na. Basta black grant period. Chair, um, I think uh, there's a misconception that the CMGP is a share from the road users tax. It's an appropriation specifically for allocation to local government units, which is annually appropriated in the GAA. So it's not uh, a share from the road users tax. It's not a source from it. It's sourced from the uh, general fund of the national government. Ako naging governor, yun ang sinasabi sa amin, nagaling yan sa road users tax. Ngayon sinasabi ninyo, uh, iba ang pinanggagalingan, isang line item sa GAA. Yes po, nasa lump sum Isa item po siya. yung road users tax? I'm not uh, privy to that, but... Um, Kasi mulat sa pool, yan ang sinasabi sa amin eh. Share namin yan. Katulad ng ira, share rin namin. Eh, bakit nagkaganon? Bakit biglang line item na lang siya? Yes, I have been handling the CMG before uh, for a period already. And uh, it's not really a uh, share from the road users tax. I think the road users tax are, um, are being allocated before by the road board. Don sa ano sa which was already ab abolished uh, in the in 2019 by a law and uh, I think the DPWH may answer the uh, questions about the road, use of the road users tax. H Yusek, so, siguro before we we continue, why why don't you partake of the halal food served a while ago? Uh, go ahead, Yusek. Uh, Mr. Chair, as to the road users tax, I think this has been aligned to the, as a regular budget already, not anymore as a, uh, uh, a road users, I mean, funding just like before. So DPM may call the, the privatizations of these utilizations of funds, Mr. Chair. And I think even the IRR still to be finalized for this matter. Okay, if I may uh, request through this committee's uh, secretary and our good chairman that uh, we get clarification po from uh, the uh, National Treasury and perhaps the Secretary of Finance kung saan nagla-landing yung road users yan. Kasi ang pagkaintindi namin noon na talagang bahagi lang yan na nabibigay sa mga probinsya. Kaya nga, allocated yan sa mga provincial roads. Kaya mahirap i-allocate yung sa uh, DPWH kasi primary and secondary national roads naman kayo. E pa, paano pa kukunin yung para sa probinsya na alam naman natin kulang na kulang ang kalsada sa bahagi, sa mga iba ibang bahagi ng barn. So, clarification na lang po. So, uh, Senator Marcos, uh, um, what, what we should expect from the end of uh, uh, Governor Adjong is to write us formally a letter relative to that. And we'll seek a query with the indulgence of Senator Marcos to settle this once and for all to the DBM and Department of Finance. Bakit ganito yung nangyari? 
And then, the man is listening here, uh, what would be the consequential effect? Would, would there be a budgetary allocation in so far as the, in so far as the, the dissolved CMGF for uh, the bar provinces? Will there be a, a, a corresponding fiscal space that would probably absorb uh, what was there before? So, siguro yun yung as we go along, kasi nagkalituhan lang dito, but then DBM, you should prepare for that answer. Uh, otherwise, we'll be forced to uh, address this come uh, the bad national budget deliberations. Yeah. Pwede na namin i-bring up sa national budget deliberation kasi maaga ang budget call ngayon. But in the meantime, just one further clarification sa BARM authorities, please, na there is no prohibition from using the uh, BARM share of every province on the previous CNGP projects, yung mga provincial road. Pwede naman nilang gamitin yan. Yes, ma'am. Pwede naman po. But... Uh, for 2020, ang talagang uh, allocation ng public works uh, ay nakafocus dun sa barangay roads. Kasi yun yung last mile. Public na works ng BARM, hindi yes, yung national yes. project, pag, uh, hindi yung national DPWH. Yes ma'am, kasi po yung national roads in the BARM, which is less than a thousand kilometer, uh, national government na po ang may ano non, ang nag-allocate non. So ang focus namin ay abutin natin yung mga komunidad na nasa malalayo po. Okay, so talagang walang pagkukunan yung provincial road ng mga ating governor. Thank you. Uh, Senator Marcos, siguro we give a chance for the United Nations Development Program uh, to make a statement and then we go to the Australian Embassy. Thereafter, we wrap up with some national government agencies here, especially the finance the banking institutions and then we get a word from the Department of Energy uh, relative to the energy supply of the BARM area uh, considering that uh, previously there was a, a commitment coming from Japan uh, relative to the Maguindanao Electric Cooperative, the Lasureco, Lano del Sur Electric Cooperative, the Basilan Electric Cooperative, Tawi Tawi Electric Cooperative, Sulu Electric Cooperative, and the Siasi Electric Cooperative. So, heads up sa inyo. And then, DSWD and uh, DNR. DSWD, yung, na, yung requirements kanina na nabanggit tungkol sa, sa decommissioning, yung mga hindi niya pa nabibigay na promeso. And then, uh, the, the role of uh, DNR in so far as your uh, intergovernmental uh, grouping is concerned. So, uh, UNDP, you have the floor. Hey, uh, th thank you, Chair and um, Chairman, Senator. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, a lot has been said already, so uh, I'll just highlight uh, three or four quick points uh, that affect the broader development prospects of Bangsamoro and also the peace process. Uh, one has to do with the fact that the MILF faces a very unique challenge, especially if you look at uh, the issue from the perspective of other peace processes in, in other countries. And I've had the good fortune a misfortune to work in 15 different countries with UNDP that have worked with uh, post-conflict transitions. And, and this challenge is that the MILF now has to have three identities. One is uh, it's still a member of a peace process with the government. It's a party to a peace process. It requires a very different uh, set of skills to carry the process forward. Uh, it's also the government of the day. And, uh, and the same individuals sometimes have to function as, as ministers working on behalf of the entire Moro population. And a third, the MILF is transitioning to a political role in advance of the elections in 2022. And th these are three very different roles that require three very different skill sets. And we have to recognize that and then support the MILF to play these roles in, in the best way possible, provide the right kind of leadership. Uh, and this, in turn, requires accompaniment by all the partners around the table, including uh, the national government at all different levels. And this is something that is quite key, in fact, to ensuring that the transition is successful. From uh, UNDP side, we have, uh, uh, with the support of Australia, uh, assisted the MILF to establish a new school for peace and democracy, help with the transition in Aceh, and this is an institution program that will be based at the Development Academy of Bangsamoro. 
um, and this will help MILF combatants and, and, and commanders and all the way down to, to foot soldiers to make the transition to civilian life. And we're also partnering with uh, the Asian Institute of Management to bring in uh, colleagues of all of us around the table who have been in government and who have been involved in this kind of work uh, to work directly with the, uh, uh, with the cabinet, uh, with the ministers, uh, on a bridging leadership initiative. And the first round of this exercise has been held with all cabinet ministers and the chief minister taking part, again with the idea that, uh, that we equip the leadership to play these different and very complex roles. Uh, so that's, that's one issue that we wanted to highlight. I think the second issue to note is that more than half the population of Bangsamoro is between the ages of 15 and 35, and officially, therefore, within the, the official definition of youth. Uh, and this is a group uh, that is undergoing significant demographic, cultural, social change. Uh, they have uh, different aspirations. They have economic aspirations and, and aspirations to empowerment that go well beyond their, uh, their, uh, their predecessors and, and their previous generation. Uh, and this is something that we have to equip uh, Bangsamoro to recognize and work with. A lot of great steps are already being taken. Uh, the Office of Bangsamoro Youth Affairs, which uh, essentially corresponds to the ministry uh, in the government, has now put together a youth priority plan. Uh, but there's still a lot to be done. I and mean, the plan is there, but implementing it will require a significant engagement between, uh, between the government and the, and the people. And this is something we'll have to support. And I should mention, I can quote one uh, young participant in a meeting that I attended of youth uh, who told me that uh, his expectation of Balsamoro leaders was that they should be HIP. Uh, HIP is H-I-P. So they should be able to create hope, H, provide inspiration, I, and use their power, which is P. So that's the expectation of the younger generation, and, and this is something that we will all have to work uh, together to, to support for both younger men and women. Uh, that's the second point uh, we would want to highlight. The third then has to do with the problem of security, and, and a lot has been done since the Marawi siege to improve security, to reduce the risk of extremist violence, but a lot more still needs to be done. Uh, and I should mention that uh, under the leadership of MILG and, and Attorney Sunarimbo, there's a community resilience plan being developed for, uh, for Bangsamoro that will essentially equip uh, LGUs to be able to address um, risks from both violence and natural disasters in an integrated manner, and to have an effective capacity for early warning and response. That would leave the minister to provide the details on that. But this will correspond to the National Action Plan on Preventing and Countering Violent Extremism that has been already been developed by the national government. And of bringing these initiatives down to the local level and ensuring that, uh, that uh, uh, there is effective early warning and response uh, will, will need to be a priority. And I should also mention that uh, under Governor Jong's leadership, Lana Dal Sur is establishing fairly effective uh, community security platforms in 15 uh, vulnerable municipalities in the Lake Lanao area uh, that have been already uh, doing a lot of good work in, in, in addressing this issue. Uh, and fourth and, and, and finally, I think we, uh, there is a, a very rich resource that, uh, that Bangsamoro has, which is its faith-based and traditional leaders and communities of people who have uh, access to and can engage with some of those who are alienated and radicalized. Uh, and I think there's a lot of work to be done to tap into uh, faith-based leaders, religious leaders, uh, to, to engage in the right way, to develop a powerful narrative uh, against that of violence, to attract people to something more positive. Um, the Chief Minister has, uh, has put forward a framework for moral governance. And I think Bangsa Moro can, uh, can very uh, productively uh, detail this framework, working with the faith-based community uh, in the region so that we have an alternative to, to violence. So th those are the points we'll highlight from our side. Thank you, uh, Mr. Komar. I would like to acknowledge first the arrival of the chairman of the Committee on Energy, Senator uh, Sherwin Gacharyan. He'll be asking a lot of questions concerning the Mindanao Security Agency, uh, Security Energy Security Situation, and the proposals emanating from BARM relative to energy. But uh, I, I, I got a point from your uh, presentation, Mr. Kumar, that, uh, say that again, 15 to 35 years old uh, residents are uh, comprised 50% of the population? Of the yes, we don't, have, so we, we, don't, we don't have the latest, cen latest yes. census data, but from the last data that we have and also what we are hearing from UN agencies and their assessments on the ground, uh, that's our estimate that over yes. half the population is now in this uh, in this category. Thank you, thank you. So my political and policy question now is: Is there a youth representative uh, in the BTA? Is, is there a do we have somebody there to represent the youth, uh, Mr. Minister? 
ilan po yung kabataan. I, I understand, 79 na ngayon yung members. Kulang pa na ang isa? Yes, 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 sir. There's a specific um, member of parliament who represents the youths. This is Marjan Imimbantas, son of the former vice chair of the MILF. He's also the head of the youth wing of the political party of the MILF. And he heads the uh, Bangsamoro Youth Commission of the Regional Government. Uh, another question. Meron na tayong wali, no? This has been... Pero hindi to announced. Uh, yes, sir. The is... wali was among the earliest to be appointed through a resolution of the BTA po. And, and the, the wali now is? Um, uh, uh, Sheikh Khalifa Nando, who is a very senior uh, religious authority in the region. Okay. Thank you. We'll be asking the Australian representative to speak last because of geographical proximity to the Barm region. Uh, you have the floor, Mr. Uh, Richard. He's on the Deputy Head of Mission of the Australian Embassy. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. There was, uh, I follow your logic uh, on, on geography and uh, speaking order. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Senators and distinguished uh, representatives and guests. I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to speak here today, and in particular to thank you, Senator Tolentino, for the invitation. It's actually been quite a privilege uh, to sit here and listen to the evidence presented to, the, um, to this hearing and to um, see the interplay uh, as questions arise and answers are, uh, are requested and delivered. As uh, the Japanese deputy head of mission uh, observed earlier, we know that peace and stability in the south of this country is essential not only to the security of the Philippines, but also to the entire Southeast Asian region of which Australia is part. We are proud to be helping the government of the Philippines and the Bangsamoro Transitional Authority to improve access to services in conflict-affected and fragile communities and to promote peace, security and prosperity in those communities. In doing this, Australia works closely with the Office of the Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process, the Department of Interior and Local Government and the Department of Education to ensure that our priorities align closely with those of the Philippine Government. Australia is proud to have uh, supported peace and stability in Muslim Mindanao since at least 1996. Our current work in Muslim Mindanao, currently worth uh, 80.6 million Australian dollars between 2014 and 2022, supports the ongoing peace process. This includes assisting with the transition to the new autonomous region, support to the normalization process, and broader peace building work, including countering violent extremism and the sort of initiatives that Mr. Kumar spoke to a moment ago. We helped to support work that led to the passage and ratification of the Banks of Moro Organic Law, establishing the new BAM. And now we are assisting with the transition process, providing governance capacity building support through UNDP, for example. And we're also supporting the normalization process to demobilize combatants, as General Galvez referred to, and to establish peace and prosperous communities through support to the World Bank managed Mindanao Trust Fund, the independent decommissioning body that has been mentioned here this morning, and in future, the Banks of Moro Normalization Trust Fund. We have helped with the drafting of several key BAM legislative codes. We've also worked on building community resilience by working with non-government partners such as the Asia Foundation, International Alert, the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue, Oxfam, and the Institute for autonomy and governance. Let me give you an example. For, for instance, we've been helping communities to work together to de-escalate violence and resolve conflict.
by establishing early, early warning networks that could identify radicalisation. And we've been supporting land management planning and clan conflict resolution. We're also encouraging an inclusive peace process and political dialogue through the partition, participation of women and indigenous peoples, researching local drivers of violent extremism and helping religious and community leaders to promote messages of tolerance and moderation. Earlier, the Australian Defence Force and Intelligence provided support that contributed to the defeat of the terrorists who besieged Marawi. And now we are helping the people of Marawi through humanitarian assistance and the city's recovery. Our humanitarian support to Marawi has been extensive with a total of 30 million Australian dollars committed since 2017. This has included a range of support for those who have been displaced, including protection services, dignity and reproductive health, support to end gender-based violence, to improve food distribution and school feeding programs, and importantly, psychosocial services and livelihood assistance. In the last year, we have supported at least 4,800 people affected by the crisis in Marawi to have better access to food, water, sanitation and hygiene. We've also supported 4,420 displaced families, so that's about 20,000 people, to establish small businesses and start earning an income again. Australia is a lead donor to the basic education work in the Bangsamoro through our program called Education Pathways to Peace, which is working towards a more equitable participation of boys and girls in the early grades of their schooling. Investing in these early grades is important to build foundational literacy and numeracy skills and to foster values of peace and inclusion in a new generation, a generation of hope. In the last year of this program, we supported 33 alternative learning centres in the BAM, in enabling 751 students to attend school. We're also supporting the government of the BAM to revise its elementary school curriculum to improve teaching standards and integrate gender equality social inclusion and peace. Australia, like the government of the Philippines, is committed to helping the new BAM government reap the benefits of the peace dividend. And while it is daunting, it's also exciting to be part of such a great project. I hope that our work helps to contribute to a stronger Bangsamoro, a stronger Mindanao and a stronger Philippines. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Deputy Head of Mission, we, we really understand that Austra the Australian government has been deeply embedded in this uh, process and, and we, hope, we look forward to more engagements, uh, perhaps coming from uh, the agricultural sector, which we know you're very famous of, the livestock uh, dairy industry development, which probably would be a great uh, input in terms of the agricultural development of the barm area. So we look forward to that uh, engagement, uh, sir. So thank you for the assistance coming from the Australian uh, government. Uh, Senator Gachelian would want to propound some questions. Yeah, I would like to just say a few words regarding the uh, comment of uh, uh, Mr. Um, Sison. Uh, I really commend the efforts of the Australian government to uh, expand the alternative learning system program in um, in BARM. In fact, uh, yesterday we just approved the law institutionalizing uh, the alternative learning system uh, in the Philippines. And because uh, the Senate views that this is a tool to fight poverty, it's a tool to uh, give second chances to those who didn't complete uh, formal schooling. And um, it's a tool also to help transition a lot of our um, countrymen in BARM going into the mainstream economy. 
and uh, I'd like to commend uh, putting a lot of effort in that. And uh, definitely, education is a is a uh, formidable weapon in in fighting poverty in that area. Um, Mr. Chair, I would like to expound on some questions, uh, but this this time around um, on energy. And uh, this is another hat that I'm wearing in in this in this um, uh, Senate. Uh, first of all is the question of um, total electrification. I think uh, as a uh, uh, here to represent the DOE. And um, uh, we still have about 2.3 million households in the entire Philippines uh, who does not have electricity, of which half of that is in Mindanao. And um, the uh, energy poverty in Mindanao, particularly in Barm, is quite substantial. I'm still trying to get the exact number uh, for BARM. But definitely, uh, when it comes to total electrification, uh, Mindanao and BARM uh, has um, uh, a lot of issues regarding reaching the households uh, for total electrification. My question to Asaka Kisa, and I have expounded this in, in, in the Committee on Energy, is what are the programs that uh, the DOE, and also in line with the BARM government, undertaking to uh, reach every household and connect them with electricity? Uh, this is a big challenge, I understand. Uh, we've been talking about this in many, many occasions, but uh, we have to have some concrete uh, program in order to uh, give electricity to all of our kababayans in BARM. And uh, like I said, no, um, poverty is not only in the form of monetary poverty, but there's such a thing as energy poverty. No? And this is what we want to fight uh, in the region. So, Asik? No, thank you very much. Just stay here, please. Well, uh, basically the purpose of the uh, BOI law is uh, to see to it that uh, we'll be able to address uh, every aspect of problem, including the local problems, or with respect to this one, with uh, the uh, Bangsamoro areas. Uh, right now, I suppose there will be this will be included as uh, input, Mr. Chair, uh, in the uh, ongoing process of uh, coordination between the government and the. Bangsamoro government. Uh, there's a mechanism included in the law that the uh, Intergovernmental Energy Board will be created. And as of uh, today, the IEB has already been organized and uh, constituted. And the IEB has already been convened uh, with respect to the government side. And uh, we have already discuss matters of substance, and once this are finalized, we'll be ready to meet with the, our counterpart from the Bangsamoro uh, government, which I, I suppose the name uh, counterpart is the Ministry of Energy and Environment. And uh, hopefully that will be soon. And this will be, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, included as input so that uh, everything that we have to do for that area will be uh, uh, planned and uh, implemented. Because uh, there's this need of coordination. Uh, because the, we have to define uh, what, who will be regulating, uh, who will be supervising eventually. Uh, power, we have three main components here, power distribution and uh, transmission, and it's a matter uh, relating to distribution. And uh, as mentioned by uh, Senator Wynn, we really have uh, big concerns, serious concerns in the Bangsamoro area, because this has the lowest uh, uh, percentage or uh, implementation, uh, in the implementation of our total electrification program. So I suppose since this is also the purpose of the the BOL law, then we'll have more focus, and this will serve as input so that once the coordination is made, uh, then the bank tomorrow can also have programs focus uh, on matters like this one. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you. Uh, sec In fact, uh, I, I just got uh, data that the uh, electrification ratio in BARM is only 35%. So only 35% of households there have electricity. 65% walang kuryente, no electricity. So that's a um, quite a sh shocking um, revelation. And uh, that's why in, 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 I remember, Mr. Chair, in the discussion during uh, the Bank Samara Organic Law, one of the uh, provisions that the uh, proponents of the BOL lobbied is to give them power to operate uh, generation plants and distribution utilities. And this power is not allowed in our national law through IPIRA. So IPIRA prohibits government to operate uh, power plants and also distribution utilities. But because of this shocking number, which is 35% of households, only 35% of households have electricity, uh, the Bank Samoro Organic Law proponents lobbied to have that power to operate power plants and distribution utilities to reach all households in uh, uh, the Bangsamoro region. However, there's a limitation to that. No? Um, that power will be taken away after 25 years so that it will be in line with the national uh, policy of, of the private sector operating power plants and distribution utilities. I, I said that because, of course, at 25 years, to eh, no? And um, that, that power should be used fully to make sure that there is energy security and total electrification in the region. No? And uh, that's why I want to ask the representative of the chief minister um, uh, if you have any plans of uh, using that special power and also how do you plan to uh, uh, achieve total electrification in, in the region uh, using this uh, special power that Congress granted. No. Oh, sir. sir, with the permission of the chair, uh, that, that is true. We lobbied hard with the good senator to grant the regional government to power, uh, to the power to uh, build and operate uh, utilities, power utilities in the region. The idea behind that is to allow us to catch up with the rest of the country uh, in terms of the ratio for electrification. This is also borne out by the study that we commissioned Galing Pu to do for us. Uh, among the top three uh, needs expressed by our constituents last year are roads, electricity, and water. So electricity is still part of the top three. Uh, the regional government already uh, incorporated energy in the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources as a, as a start for building up the bureaucracy. But we are also engaged with uh, several development partners uh, with respect to uh, bringing in um, energy players in the region. And uh, for this year, we are focused on the island provinces for uh, alternative energy sources. That is the directive of the chief minister. The Secretary of Finance facilitated a bit meeting between us and uh, Qatar Development Foundation, who expressed interest in investing in the island provinces for power generation. Po. It's good to hear that you're also tapping into um, uh, foreign uh, investors to uh, improve the power situation in the area. In fact, uh, uh, I would like to urge, strongly urge the Bank Samoro uh, region government to uh, make the AR, make the Bank Samoro region as a model for renewable energy. You know? And uh, uh, with the creation of the Ministry of Energy there, there is a big possibility that the Ministry of Energy there will be much more efficient than the Department of Energy. Oh, no? yeah. Because yeah, my logic there is because it's smaller. No? And the Department of Energy covers a much more bigger area. But my point of the matter there is uh, competition also in policy is good no, for the country. And uh, because of its smaller uh, footprint, 
uh, it can be a model for sustainable energy, renewable energy, as well as total electrification program. My case in point there is the Basulta area. You know? Instead of putting, um, let's say, uh, diesel generators, kaya pa dyan ng solar power plants and tapping into the hydropower plants. And because, it's, because the Ministry of Energy is smaller, uh, the process is much faster. So it's, it's a good, uh, probably it can be a much better model for all of us no? uh, to follow. And uh, that's why it's a challenge. I'm, I'm challenging the Mang Samoro government to use that special power that Congress have granted the Mang Samoro government in order not only to fix uh, the power situation there, but be a model for sustainable energy, for renewable energy, and also for, uh, for uh, different technologies. Uh, at the same time, I'd like to also. Um, yeah, yes, yes. Senator yes, if Senator Gachelian will allow. Um, I'm a great believer, almost magically, that uh, plans become reality. Is there a plan or a uh, date? Uh, a deadly deadline for us to finally catch up with that 65% that are uh, power poor at this point in BARM. Dapat magbigay tayo ng sariling deadline kahit DOE o BARM. Pagkaisahan natin yan para matapos na yung 65%. Napakarami naman ng 3 million. Hindi po ba pwedeng bigyan na natin ng uh, uh, deadline yan at plano? Kasi alam natin, there are challenges talaga in BARM. The island provinces are very difficult. Magindanao is vast and the Liguasan Marsh goes on and on. Ngunit uh, pwede bang uh, pagtulungan natin na talagang magkaroon na yan ng power at a certain date? Sabihin natin 10 years? Parang ang haba na nun. Uh, Mr. Chair, well, uh, first of all, on a national scale, alam naman natin na uh, Yung problema dyan, it includes so many concerns, including security. Yeah. So, uh, with now, with the new framework, uh, magkakaroon ngayon ng uh, focus. Kaya, yun ang purpose naman ng creation ng Bang Samoro. Nandiyan na sila. And in coordination, and in support of the department also, we have the data. Then, uh, they have more control on the concerns of uh, those area. And then, uh, we can all work together uh, as provided for by law and on the parameters that we uh, could have this coordination. So, Asik Elgisa, what I'm referring to is actually the experience in the 1970s in rural electrification. Kasi ang nangyari po no, nag-issue kung ano-ano nangyayari, binabanatan ng binabanatan yung mga poste, at talagang pinapaputok, pinapasabog ng uh, iba't ibang uh, grupong rebelde, yung mga linalagay ng pamahalaan ng mga poste ng kuryente. Subalit ang nangyari, yung Kuwait ang pumasok at nag-issue ng Kuwaiti bonds. At uh, pagkatapos nun, nung yung mga trabahador at yung binabayaran ay uh, mga Arabo at kapwa Muslim, talaga namang hindi na uh, tinamaan yung mga poste. Tuloy-tuloy yung rural electrification na nagsimula sa Lanao, sa Maguindanao nung panahon na yun. At uh, maganda pong example at uh, nasisiyahan po kami na narinig kay Atty. Sinarimbo na papasok yung Qatar. Pag pumasok yung Qatar at yung uh, mga Middle Eastern countries, ang laking tulong talaga dahil uh, kinikilala at ginagalang ng ating mga um, BARM residents ang tulong ng uh, ating mga Middle Eastern uh, neighbors. So that's a really good option and tested and proven in the past. Sir, and lastly, no, just to complete, uh, I also checked there are nine alien co-ops in the ARM region. No? Uh, so, um, there's nine co-ops in, in, in uh, the region, in the BARM region, all of them are ailing. No? And uh, when I say ailing, that means uh, collection is very low, uh, debt is also very high. And uh, I remember clearly during the uh, si Attorney Nagyo ay nandoon nung nag-ano nag, tayo, pinag-uusapan natin. One of the reasons also for uh, uh, giving a lot of power to the Bangsamore government is to fix the ailing co-ops. In fact, uh, the uh, supervision over these co-ops will slowly be turned over to the Bangsamore government no? from NEA. So in, in other words, um, this is also a big challenge. But I remember uh, before during the discussion that uh, uh, the argument here is uh, you guys will be in the best position to solve 
the cultural problems surrounding the ailing co-ops because a lot of them seems to me that uh, uh, the reason why there is low collection rate is because of cultural uh, matters no because some of them are saying eh too big naman namin yung nasa um, uh, nasa lawa bakit kami magbabayad doon no so i think that will can, that can be resolved um, by the Bangsamoro government and um, because th that is also a very important matter without solving the ailing co-ops it will very it, it will be very difficult also to reach 100 total electrification because by simple equation uh, the co-ops will not have sufficient funds to roll out total electrification program hihingi yan sa gobyerno para i-fund in total electrification so Again, it's a challenge. I don't have an answer right now, but it's a challenge to solve the collection and the financial viability of these ailing co-ops. And uh, anything that the Committee on Energy can do, um, let us know. And uh, I'll work hand in hand with the Department of Energy uh, to, to uh, find some solutions. Kung makakatulong ho kami, um, let us know. Because uh, my view here is uh, the country's development will not be complete only one part of our region will not achieve uh, total electrification. Dapat buong bansa total electrification so that we can claim that uh, the Philippines is tro truly progressing. So again, anything that we can do in the uh, Committee on NG, just let us know. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Governor Sakurtan. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on uh, the matter of uh, electrification, uh, in uh, Sulu, we have a collection rate of more than 100% because they are able to uh, collect even uh, arrears. Uh, except that uh, the uh, power supply is uh, very, very in, uh, in insufficient. So I just would like to suggest that if we can simplify the uh, matter of uh, processing applications, uh, because there are, uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, prospective uh, private investors who would like to come in. And uh, I do believe that they can do it. They would not I mean, uh, come in unless they're, uh, of course, uh, assured of uh, like security. And uh, this should uh, help a lot uh, uh, our people, especially in the, the uh, rural areas, where you have uh, electric posts with lines, but with no power. So, yan po ang uh, nangyayari sa atin na sana. We can bring in, we can bring in investors. Except that, uh, sana mas simplify natin ang uh, the uh, process of uh, uh, application. Like, for example, the matter of uh, uh, experience in uh, the industry. Uh, if we, we can possibly uh, mean, uh, simplify that or remove that. Because otherwise, people will just go around the law. Pay, I mean, uh, uh, mga other groups just to you know, just to uh, satisfy the I mean, minimum requirements uh, of the law. So, yun lang po, na kung pwedeng sisimplifyin lang natin, marami kami ma-imbita na investors. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the Attorney uh, Sinarimbo, na-create na ba yung Ministry of Energy? Have you created that uh, office? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yung pong Ministry of uh, environment natural resources naka incorporate for now yung energy don as a bureau of that ministry uh, as we gradually build up the bureaucracy so tira timing din ho namin yung pagpapalaki ng burokrasya doon sa dagdag na trabaho but even as we do that we are already addressing some of the major concerns here for instance yung cultural uh, which is really prevalent and this is the transition that we wanted to do also yung mindset Yung pong mga rebelde, ang mindset nila, pag nalugi mo, nasira mo yung facilities ng gobyerno, panalo ka na. Uh, so, yun, unti-unti natin binabago in the transition of the combatants of the MILF. That we're here to work, build up government infrastructure so that you can have services for you. So, unang step natin. Structurally, inaayos na rin ho natin yung ultimately magiging uh, Ministry of Energy. Uh, but we would need a lot of help sa technical capacity po para dito. Hindi ho simpleng uh, uh, ministry ito na itatayo. But even then, uh, we work with JICA, we requested JICA to provide assistance for improving the distribution 
uh, last year po may grant ng JICA doon sa improvement of the distribution for Majelco. And then they are now in Basilan also improving yung mga transmission ay uh, yung uh, distribution lines natin in the communities in improved na rin hulat. Nagbigay sila ng mga boom trucks uh, yung mga kuryente in improved na rin natin yun. And then we'll gradually move towards the island provinces of Sulu and Basilan. So may mga immediate naman po na ginagawa na para sa improvement ng electricity in the region. Thank you, uh, Minister. That's why I would like to congratulate, commend the assistance, the government of Japan for the assistance uh, relative to the energy sector. And perhaps uh, it, it would not be asking too much if uh, the, the, from your end we also help establish that structure uh, needed right now, the, min the Ministry of uh, Environment, Energy. So uh, thank you. Arigato gudaimasu. Uh, Senator Marcos will be uh, asking the last question relative to the banking, banking and finance, but I, I'd like to probably just uh, pinpoint some questions to DSWD. Bakit daw may problema tayo ngayon sa distribution ng 4 piece DNR, uh, you can submit a position paper relative to the, the consequences of, 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 of BARM having the entire natural resources allotted to to the barn uh, with no share to the national government. Uh, Minda, I think your role, is Minda still there? Wala na? Uh, I think you're, you're, you should be more proactive. Hindi ko na naririnig si Secretary Pinyol. Uh, dapat siguro nagkikriss-cross siya sa iba't ibang mga uh, probinsya ng barn. Ano ba talaga ngayon ang role ng Minda? Uh, you should be part of that, ano eh, OPAP, yung pinag-uusapan kanina to to shepherd all of this. So what's the role of Minda now? Minda, Minda. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Actually, we were part of um, all discussions related to integrating development in Minda now. Um, on the energy side, for instance, we are we were proposing to DOE to collaborate with MENRE for formulating a Bangsamoro energy plan. We already have a Mindanao energy plan, but we prefer that we carve out a very specific Bangsamoro energy plan, reflective of the unique situation of uh, BARM, yes. um, especially in the context of needing to address peculiarities. Um, have you submitted that to the uh, BARM uh, that has That has yet to be discussed by the newly formed intergovernance uh, inter uh, body on, on energy that was um, formed. Uh, Can you provide us a draft uh, in the near future? Pag natapos niyo yan? Definitely, uh, Mr. Chair. In fact, I'd like to cite, uh, Mr. Chair, one perfect example of how we are collaborating in addressing certain energy requirement issues in Tawi-Tawi uh, with the support of the European um, Union through its Access to Sustainable Energy Program, where we're currently implementing a um, 4 million euro um, hybridized solar project for Tawelco, specifically for the two municipalities of um, Sibuto and Sitangkay, uh, with a one megawatt um, solar to increase um, electricity available for additional 3,000 um, households in the area. And we'd like that later on to be a model for all other off-grid areas of the island provinces because definitely there has to be a separate approach in terms of looking the way forward for the island provinces uh, distinct to the situation also of Las Ureco and Miguelna, which is connected to the grid. And... Um, but that's why the Bank Samoa energy plan, energy plan would, would definitely um, take into account the distinct strategies that will have to be formulated and, and recommended in so far as addressing the electrification, rural electrification ratio of, of, of less than or less than 35 percent within the Bank Samoa region. Um, these are among the uh, specific interventions being pursued by Minda. Apart from the bigger framework of, of Mindanao integration, um, its role in terms of collaborating with the Bank Samura for the barter trade uh, and, and, and with the Department of Trade and Industry, as well as um, pushing for Bank Samura's active participation in the BAMPEAGA sub-regional cooperation. And in fact, related to that, Mr. Chair, quickly. Civil service, uh, civil service, wag ka man ang malis. Kasunod ka na rito. And, and related to that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, that's why see Secretary uh, Pinyol is, is not, uh, not here today because he's in Kota Kinabalu uh, speaking for a, a global economic forum where part of the discussion is the transfer of Indonesian capital to East Kalimantan, which is part of BIMP Iaga and where Mindanao is only around one hour and 30 minutes away. 
So these are all um, way forward in terms of the opportunities we can see for Bangsamoro taking advantage of, of such economic interchange later on. We look forward to that uh, barter trade revival, whether it's in Tawi-Tawi or uh, in, in whatever place. Uh, the reason why I ask you to stay behind civil service, uh, in, in connection with the mandate of Bangsamoro government, Chet is here, uh, Deped is here, hindi ko pa kayo natanong, pwede bang makatulong tayo mapadali yung magbigay kayo ng, uh, not, not a position paper, but uh, an advisory paper to the BARM authorities relative to the tribal university system as well as the Madaris. Kasi ang nangyayari dito, ang nakalagay sa batas, the Civil Service Commission shall promulgate rules and regulations to set the standards. Parang wala pa na gagawa na standards ang Civil Service Commission. Pero ang may competency rito ay si CHED. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan ay yung tribal university system. Kasama na rin si DepEd. So, I think yung kayong tatlo, pwede siguro, o oh, gusto niyo magsalita ngayon, pwede siguro kayong gumawa ng uh, advisory paper addressed to the BARM on how to facilitate all of this. Kasi kailangan natin tulungan sila mapabilis ito eh. So, who speaks first? Uh, Deped, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa katotohanan, Mr. Chair, uh, good senators, we've been in constant uh, communication with no less than Minister Iqbal and his team. In fact, during our National Management Committee meeting, they're always be, uh, are part of the man Management uh, Committee meeting to iron out uh, uh, some of the challenges of the BARM. Um, just to provide you an update, no? one of the issues raised uh, to us is with regards to the salaries of that personnel in the 63 barangays in Cotabato. That is already included. No? On top of that, we continue to provide them with some provisions like the normal school building. Uh, school building uh, Why not purpose well, though? Um, sa ngayon po... Kasi na, na turnover na sa BARM yung 63 barangays. Pero sa ngayon po, kasi reflected po yun doon sa, doon sa region na 12. Eh. Pero we're working out na with DBM on how we can transition it for the 2021 budget po. Uh, as, as for the rest of the inputs po, like school building, teacher items, textbooks, and other things. No? Ngayong 2019, nasa sa amin pa yun, Pero we're still... For 2021 budget preparation, we are uh, uh, discussing it with DBM po. Uh, in relation to the... Um, Pinatanong ko yun, kung sakaling i-implement na yung batas na in-author ni Senator Gatchalian, mm -hmm. marami rin nagka-author, yung good manners and right conduct. Mm -hmm. So, yung Ministry of Education ng BARM, will they also adopt that, uh, that, that law? Yeah, ang maganda po doon. O pwede nilang baguhin kasi... Uh, grade 6 lang tayo, no? Uh, grade 6. Pwede niyang gawing grade 12? Yan uh, ba yan? Yeah, ang, ang maganda po dito sa conversation namin with Minister Iqbal po, ang sabi nila, susundin namin kung ano man yung mga patakaran nyo. For example po, in the hiring of uh, teachers, in the promotion of one, they will follow all the rules of the, uh, the guidelines of the Department of Education, not only in terms of teaching items, but also in the standards of school building and so on and so forth po. Now, in relation to the uh, question you asked earlier po, Madaris. Po, sa Madaris po, meron po, di ba, ang DepEd, may, pro, may programa yung tinatawag na Madrasa Education. So, they will build on that po, doon sa pro program ng, ng ating uh, uh, kagawaran po. So, in short, you are assisting the BARM? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, technical totally assistance the, po. Glad to hear that. Okay. Civil Service Commission, have you set the standards? Uh, yeah relative to the Madaris. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair uh, for uh, the information of the body, the Civil Service Commission is also coordinating with the BARM. So, but do we have the standards now or we're still crafting this? I think the standard that will come from us will pertain to the qualification standards of the positions that may be possibly created. Uh, but as I said, we have been coordinating with the BARM. They have sent us a legal team headed by the Attorney General uh, to talk about uh, reconciliation of the proposed civil service code in the barn because uh, we do not want it to be in conflict with the national law. And then our agreement during our last meeting is that they will be sending us uh, queries and uh, a request for assistance on certain matters. 
Uh, based on my conversation earlier with their Attorney General, I think they have sent the request today. I think it's already on, on our way to our office. We'll be responding to that. I think the question pertaining to the qualifications of Madaris will be included there, and we will respond accordingly, Mr. Chair. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, dagdag ko lang po do, uh, in relation to Madrasa Education. May kasamang component yun yung tinatawag naming Alive Project. Yung Alive stands for uh, Arabic Language and Islamic Values. Sa katunayan nga po, ina-assist namin yung mga asatids para maka-acquire sila ng eligibility. Eventually, they will be regularized, regularized as a teacher po. Everything is a work in progress. Kaya yes, yung po. kanina, siguro sa conversations dito, nakikita natin, baka yung iba, bine-blame yung BARM kasi hindi pa natatapos yung ganito, hindi pa natatapos yung ganito. Lumalabas yung national government, meron ding, meron ding deliverables kayo na hindi pa nabibigay, na naghihintayan. Like for example, sa Madari, sino ba yung mauna? Yung Civil Service Code ng, ng BARM o yung Civil Service uh, Commission Central Office Standards. So, uh, chicken and egg situation tayo ngayon. Kaya mas maganda siguro nag-uusap. And that's one of the outputs of this uh, hearing. University Tribal System, Chad. Good afternoon, ho. In the case of the Commission on Higher Education, we are closely coordinating with the Ministry of Basic Higher and Technical uh, Education. Um, we are, in the case of the Tribal University, we are planning to have a technical working group this year. Technical working group headed by our Commissioner uh, Ronald Adamat. What will happen to the tribal university? This, this will be another university, an autonomous university? Actually, in terms of definition of the tribal university, we're also asking the ministry to really lay out what it is because in Tamam. Uh, every quarter, uh, every, we have a technical every working month na. Uh -huh. Every month na. Yeah, but we, also, we already had an initial discussion. In fact, we will be tapping our state universities. Uh, to have consultations and uh, state universities do have Sulu, we have in Sulu, we have uh, in Tawi Tawi. Six, yes. Yes. For so lahat yon. Yeah. And from my understanding, during the last budget hearings here, eh napakaliit ng budget na napunta dun sa sa Sulu, sa Tawi Tawi. So ngayon magtatayo tayo ng isang university system na naman. So siguro yun ang dapat maaralan in terms of uh, allocation of uh, resources yes, sir. and sustainability. Uh -huh. So, dapat siguro tutukan nyo lang itong bar. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. okay. Maraming um, salamat. Uh, Senator Gachalia? On the topic of education, uh, I would like to also commend uh, the Mangsamar government because I understand that you created the Ministry of Education, but basic education, higher education, and technical vocational education are all in one department, no? which is the uh, being uh, talked about right now, is, is a better system no? than a trifocalization system uh, for purposes of coordination. No? Because, it, um, and see, you suggest Nandito, uh, it seems to me that there are a lot of coordination problems with the trifocalization system. No? And uh, I was made to understand that uh, in the Bangsamoro. Uh, government, uh, pinag-aralan nyo itong problema kaya gumawa kayo ng isang Minister of Education na nandun na lahat to uh, do away with that uh, uh, coordination problem. I would like to commend you on that. Kaya na sinasabi ko, baka mas magaling pa kayo sa national government. Eh. No? Because you uh, saw the issues in the national government, you're now improving it at the regional level and that is really commendable. In fact, um, one of the things that we are also going to uh, I'm, I'm going to propose to the to, to the Senate is to inter institutionalize the madrasa schools in in outside of uh, the Bangsamoro region uh, I notice also that a lot of our schools here no madrasa schools are being paid for by the local communities no uh, uh, here in Metro Manila and other areas which uh, we want to encourage more kids to go to school no uh, regardless of their uh, religion and um, we want to uh, the kids to be encouraged to go to school that's why we want to institutionalize that so that the government will pay for the um, uh, required expenses and also the uh, person that will be in charge of that school 
in the lastly mr chair no, I'd, I'd like to go back to the energy uh, kanina sinabi ni governor sakurtan uh, is a welcome development because merong gusto mag-invest ang problema lang yung red tape no and uh, one thing i want to encourage the ministry of energy is to already address the issue of uh, permitting yan talaga nagiging problema nationally mabagal ho gov yung permitting dito kaya pagdadaan kayo dito uh, talagang daabutin tayo ng matagal so if we can localize that in the region do na approvean do na ibibigay permit so that uh, the different provinces can jump start their energy um, sources mas maganda yun you don't have to come here and that's really the essence of uh, the law no to localize everything and to cut red tape Maraming salamat. Uh, I-question ko na lang sa DSWD. Walang problema sa four phase? Yes or no na lang? O merong problema? Um, Grafe po, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, for now po, um, yung four phase po is paying through a uh, cash payout po. So, there's no cash card yet in Barnier. Yes po. But because of the absence of uh, some banking institutions. Yes po. Yung but question yeah. mamaya ni Senator Marcos. Diba? Mag Magko-close tayo ron. Yun ang segue natin. So, but uh, aside from that, walang problema. Uh, the recipients, nakakatanggap lahat on time. Late. Late. Late po. Kasi nga po, um, we're, we're still waiting for the, uh, we're, we're scheduling the payout po. Because it's through cash payout. So this coming to July 1, uh, the national government is going to implement the national ID system. So in all of this, merong epekto rin sa inyo yan, sa, sa 4P. So mapapadali siguro ng konti yan. So and I'm sure the BARM would also be part of that. Uh, I-re-register natin. We'll have now a, a quick count of uh, si ilang ba talaga yung nakatira dito. Tama ba yung ganito? So will that help kahit wala pa tayong ATM? Yes po. So ang suggestion ko lang sa DSWD siguro continue to be in touch with the BARM. Uh, not, not every quarter, but not, ev not during every hearings, pero siguro monthly na kayo para mapabilis yung pag-resolve ng mga problema natin. So the final questions before we wrap up, kasi 1.30 na. Ang bilis na oras, 9.30, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30. Apat na oras na tayo, pero we've covered a lot. Uh, Senator Marcos will be asking the last questions relative to uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Governor Tan? Uh, uh, tungkol lang sa four piece. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, we requested for a uh, cleansing of the list in the entire province of uh, Sulu. So it was, uh, we believe it was already cleansed. When they sent down the uh, list to uh, Sulu, they were uh, instructed to provide or to come up with uh, mga identifications. They already provided, but uh, the uh, releases were still very, very slow, and in fact, so many have not received. And uh, to the extent that in one of the municipalities, people, they do not like anymore to come and receive the uh, cash uh, allotment or cash allocation for them. So, yun po ang nangyari. At uh, muntik pa magkagulo between the security uh, provided for the uh, mga sa team ng uh, POPIS with the locals. So, the entire barangay chairman of one of the municipalities together with the uh, vice mayor came to see me requesting and if I already invited the uh, director and uh, other officials of the POPIS or the SWD in uh, the province of Sulu. Na, hinto na muna. Nobody would like anymore. I mean, those who have received, never mind they already received, but in the succeeding uh, releases, they do not like to uh, receive any more the POPIS because that may result to something very unpleasant and we do not like, I mean, uh, 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 past event very unpleasant event to be uh, repeated like the 1981 massacre in the island uh, municipality of Pata where about 3,000 people were killed. So, yun po ang ayaw namin na mangyari. So, I uh, think uh, about so many hundreds of uh, soldiers were killed, so many MNLF were killed, and about 2,000 civilians were killed. Thank you. Yes, WTs, akala ko ba okay? Sabi mo. <laughs> yung, um, for, for the Sulu po, um, 
Can you just give a report na lang po? I'm, so, I'm sorry po, I apologize. I'm from Disaster Management Bureau po. So, um, we don't have a rep representative from the 40s po right now. We will uh, we'll take note of that but provide that report siguro by tomorrow? Yes po. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll just uh, provide the answer to uh, Governor Sakurtan. So, uh, for the last questions, uh, array of questions, Coming from a uh, barrage of questions coming from Senator Mar Marcos, banking and finance. So, they, um, risking another violation of human rights in the BARM area. Uh, I uh, don't want you to forego your lunch yet again. So, eto na, uh, just a quick question. Kasi ano na yung banking facilities para sa atin na uh, BARM area? Uh, I recall that in 1973, we were very f proud of the fact that we had one of the first Islamic banks, the Al-Amana Islamic Bank. Tapos nabalitaan ko na tinakeovera na ng uh, uh, Treasury. Pagkatapos noong 2012, sabi ng DBP, uh, ibinenta daw sa kanila, but in 2012, they have no expertise in Islamic banking law. But uh, until today, nakalista doon na ang owner ng Al-Amana is DBP. So I think Governor uh, Mariam is also familiar because her family also had uh, a great deal to do with its operation. Kayo sa BSP, alam po, alam po ninyo yung sitwasyon na ngayon? And if not Al-Amana, what are the other uh, alternatives? Okay. Thank you very much, Honorable Senator. So, Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, so with regards to the Banco Central, we are very much uh, aware that we have a good, strong mandate to promote uh, Islamic banking finance, not only in the Bangsamoro region, but with the enactment of RA 11439. It's now already a national policy for us to promote and strengthen the, national, the Islamic banking finance in the entire country. So with regards to the Alaman Islamic Bank, you are right, because uh, in the region, we have, we have the oldest Islamic bank in the, in the region. But since 1972 or 1973, it does not take off because of so many constraints. So one of that is that al Amala Bank is the only Islamic bank that operates since then. And it's very, because of that, it's, uh, there is inherent limitations for it to be more uh, sufficient and sustainable. And because of that, um, RA 11439 was enacted. Well, it's not a DBP, but it's because they were asked to DBP, and they didn't know how to do it. Yes, ma'am. In 2012. But the ownership, the 1 billion capitalization, DBP was given, and what happened to the money? And what happened to the Al-Amana, kanino na siya? Uh, right now, uh, based on the public information, the, the Al-Amana Bank is still majority owned by the DBP. So, uh, uh, additional, uh, additional alternatives, because there is only one Islamic bank, the, the law, RA 11431, now allows the entry of other Islamic banks in the country. So, just December last year, we have already issued regulations for the BSP to license other Islamic banks whether they are foreign banks or domestic banks. And that includes as well, given our existing conventional banks, we are now allowing them to open their Islamic banking window. So with that, we have uh, adopted a very liberalized and open approach because we wanted more players in the banking system. So one of the other priorities that we are now facing is that to, to have a level playing field of these Islamic banks, vis-a-vis -vis the conventional banks, we are working on the adoption of that tax neutrality, which is also required under the Bangsamo Organic Law. So we are closely coordinating with the Bureau of Internal Revenue to issue the necessary revenue regulations to, uh, to implement tax neutrality because we recognize that if without tax neutrality, giving tax equivalent similar to a conventional banks, there will be a no level playing field for Islamic banking transactions and contracts to be more costly compared to the conventional banks. So, so uh, we'd like an update on, on that from time to time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as we all know, Islamic banking is one of the proud accomplishments of Islamic culture and civilization together with uh, mathematics, algebra, and geometry. And we should push forward with this remarkable um, and extremely modern um, insight in our Quran. Thank you. So we've covered a lot of... Uh, Issues. We're not trying to reverse engineer the okay. current uh, Bangsamoro organic law. The purpose of this hearing is to really to get an update and help facilitate uh, the, the immediate and 
successful implementation of the BARM law. So we'd like to thank Senator Marcos for her patience uh, since the start of the hearing, Senator Gachalian, Senator uh, De La Rosa, and all the resource persons here, our, uh, the members of the Diplomatic Corps, the local government officials, the governors of Sulu, Maguindanao, uh, Lano del Sur, uh, North Cotabato, uh, uh, Congressman Sinsuat, the, the Minister of Local Government of BARM, the Speaker Balindo of BARM, and other government agencies represented here. Maraming salamat po sa inyo, the local officials. Uh, again, as I've said a while ago, uh, the, the, we are assisting in the baby steps of the BARM, but uh, we would want to ensure that this would be uh, translated into successful adult strides because the success of BARM is the success of the Philippines. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. This meeting is suspended. <laughs> Salamat na ito.